<laughs> but even like with young people, it's mad because imagine you're now going through your whole life not making any decisions, being told what to do over and over again, being told that you amount to nothing, that you're going to be a drug dealer, you're going to be a criminal if you don't learn about Shakespeare, if you don't learn about yeah. British history. Then you get to 18 and then the whole of society says, all right, cool, make a decision. You're an adult now. They're like, what? Mm. I don't know what I'm doing. Like, no one's taught me. So then they turn against society and they think, you know what? F it. I'm just going to do what I want to do. And then you start learning about credit. Because now you have access to things that you didn't have access to. Yeah. And you think you're making a good decision. Yeah. <laughs> 25 and telling you, what's your credit score? Yeah. 400? Yeah. <laughs> that's no joke, bro. Trust me. Hey. You can't get nothing. It's just different, man. Yeah. Right? So it's, it's mad. And that's what mentality seeks to do, you know. Yeah. It's just bring communities together. Showcase to adults, more importantly, that we have to continue to give back to young people. Because if we don't, give them that support, that guidance, then we're going to continue to see what we're seeing in society. And me personally, over the last, what, since 2008, I've lost 13 young people to violence. 13. 13, 13 that I've worked with extensively. 13. And, if I, and you know what's mad? That will take its toll on you as well. Right yeah. Because it, there's times where, like, you might even know of a you, mm. not really talk to him, and then, like, you hear something happens, you're like, right, that's sad, man. Yeah. But then when you're actually speaking to someone day in and you're building relationships with them... Yeah. You're actually telling them, like, don't go down the wrong path. Like, mm. this is what you should do. And if that happens to them, yeah. it must take its toll on you still. Yeah, yeah. It happened with um, Raheem. Is it recording? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, bless I don't know. Oh, oh, yeah. We'll just cut it out. <laughs> What's happening, people? Welcome to another episode of the Free Shots Tequila podcast. Myself, Marvin Abbey, got your boy Taser Black in the building. What? You got a very, very special guest long overdue, doing great things in the community. Just have your name, brother, and where you're from. Yeah, Say Swims Lewis. Grew up on the Elsbury estate. Oh, no. uh, now I live in Bromley. So. You know, your name sounds like it should be knighted. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know what I'm talking about? Like, as in, like, the Queen, or you hear someone saying, <laughs> MBE or something. Says... <laughs> they ain't happening. Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> they ain't happening. Oh, you don't want it? You don't want I'll reject that one Serious? time. Serious? One time. I ain't got time for the monarchy. Would you reject an MBE or OB? I don't care, bro. I'm never getting that. <laughs> if they send a letter, I wouldn't even read it. Yeah. Well, you, I wouldn't even see that it came. Oh, don't no, say it. So you wouldn't go for it? No. Ah, definitely no, not. I don't want all that attention. I, I can't lie. I'll think about it still. I'll be like, hmm. Why? I don't know. I live here, innit? <laughs> and I live that, here. That, you see me. Like, to be honest, his son's best. Sir Abby. Imagine that. Sir no, Abby. Come on. <laughs> You know what I'm he did, he no. did it for the club, though. No, like, yeah, they exactly. Get, no, but, he uh, did it for his stuff. Look, look, look at his little finger. finger. <laughs> <laughs> they just said all of a sudden. So happy. They just said my Nigerian name, though. <laughs> like, as in, like, you know, like, oh, like that. Play. I didn't hear that. Like, night man with that, man. Forefathers are giggling. <laughs> but I was like, ah, you know what I'm saying? So. Um, they, let, they, got, they let them in, you know. It's, it's interesting, though, because Jules the Poet turned down uh, OB or MB. I can't remember which one yeah. it was. But I know other people that have collected some. So for you, why is it in terms of, I know it was starting on smoke, but is it, <laughs> why, why exactly would you say it's not for me? I, I've never really like, even though I'm British, I don't see myself as English, but I'm British. I'm a yeah. British citizen. Yeah. So my grandparents came in as part of the Windrush, but I've never pledged my allegiance to the monarchy or this country in that way. Yeah. Even though I'm grateful to this country for what, the opportunities I've got, but, this, I just can't agree with the history of this country, the monarchy, what they've done to other people in oh, the name gosh. of the monarchy yeah. and how they're living at the expense of the people. And um, yeah, I just can't subscribe to that. I'll, I'll reject it like immediately. It's interesting though, because I've heard so many arguments for and against. Yeah. Because people are on that wave with what you're saying in terms of the British Empire have done so much in the world. They've messed up other countries, colonialized, blah, 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 whatever. Mm. But then I've heard other arguments of people like, but I'm here and I've got opportunities and I am I have opportunities more than other people. Yeah. And Britain hasn't done anything to me as such. Mm. So I'm good. I'm, I'm going to accept it. But yeah. it's interesting to hear both sides of the story and how you see. Yeah, it's a tough one, especially in the work that I do, because for some people having an MBA or OBE like, will hold more weight and you can get more funding or yeah, support. Yeah, yeah, but for yeah, me, yeah. I, I just want to do it in an authentic way and do it in conjunction with my community. Like, I can't... The way I speak anyway on Twitter and, and, and Instagram, like, I can't subscribe to the monarchy because yeah, yeah. you're saying you're a member of the British Empire or by order of the, the British Empire. 
Like that's if you think about what they've done to our ancestors, our people, yeah. like, and globally, like go to India, wherever it is, they've extracted so much wealth, the Commonwealth from the people. Yeah. That's why they call it the Commonwealth because they've stolen the Commonwealth from the people, and they're just living in their palaces and while people are starving, and they're not helping anybody yeah, out. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. What's Charles now asking for? Extra forty five million mm. to refurb. Palaces that he doesn't even stay in. You don't even ask him for it. They're, take, <laughs> exactly, they're exactly. taking the money, bro. <laughs> like, they, I, yeah, 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 yeah. It's mad, sir. No, not for me, man. Not for me. I don't take, don't listen, don't believe Taser, though. Believe me. No, no, no. <laughs> Come on, man. Taser. Taser, Taser. Taser. <laughs> what? You, you can't put on the thing for no. me. I don't know. <laughs> no, 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 no. What? You'll get, you'll, you you'll, you'll take it, you'll take it and be. No. And you see Taser, 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 will, go, open the email. Taser will go with a shirt and the buttons down, <laughs> I'm down to here. People looking at the man in there like, what's the, who's mad at this? You know what's mad? Oh, here we go, here we go. Could, here we go. No, because he's the only one that said he would. That's yeah, why he's getting yeah. on to me. <laughs> exactly. I asked you the question, uh, no, bro. I didn't, like, say, I, I, I didn't say I would. What? I, I said you said I, you think about it. I just leave it there. Then. Why are you giving it to me, about it? Because I know you're lying. Okay, I'm lying. It's not coming anyway. I don't, I don't get it. It's not coming. You never know, you know. It's not coming bro. for your contributions to nightlife. No, it's all right. you know what I'm saying. No, it's all right. In the city, I like. I'll be happy that they just the economy send me and the email. Get the freedom of the city of London. What does that mean? What freedom? But, they don't but you have rave anyway. That's the city of and you still have to pledge your allegiance to the king. No, same thing. You know when you get the key to a city, what what does that do? It it brings you into a network. Of people within that, so if you're gonna go and do something in the city, people will have a little bit more influence. So you're just part of that community. Oh. But the thing is, even with the freedom of the city of London, which was basically for people that were peasants and all that back yeah. in the day, you still have to pledge allegiance to the king. Okay. So I would still reject that as well because I just can't pledge allegiance. But to ain't, the king. but ain't you pledging it anyway? Every day you're in this country in, in general. Nah, nah, not really. I don't sing the national anthem. I don't even know the words to the national anthem. Do you know what's mad about that? I was speaking to my brethren that lives in America, and he was saying that. Americans speak about Russia and all these countries being a dictatorship mm. and being a certain way, but he's like, not in, not in a rude way, but he's like, the kids are brainwashed though because from when you're in primary school, you know the first thing you do in the morning is the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. Yeah. So that, that's how in America, everyone knows the words to our Pledge of Allegiance to the American flag, blah, blah, blah. We don't do that here. Yeah. But imagine every morning from like your, from when you're like three, four years old, every morning for class, four, five. So eventually, that's why they're so patriotic. Mm. Say something about the American flag. They will lose yeah, their mind, bro. Mad. Like, you're like, bro, relax, man. <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> the great American flag. Like, brother, relax, man. I didn't say pull, nothing, bro. I pull his hamstring. Bro. <laughs> but they, because it, it's been embedded in, yeah. it's ingrained. Mm. So it's funny. Mm. You see British footballers sometimes, or English footballers. Bear man, you know the cameras going along the line? Yeah, yeah. Bear man just mumbling. Yeah. <laughs> Bear man don't know the words. Yeah. Standard. I don't know the words. Nah. How many England games have I watched? I do not know one word. I just know the end bit. Oh, God save the king. Was it well, Queen for so long, but yeah. yeah. That's the only bit I know. Or say, can you see? Is that the bit that <laughs> That's, that's, that's America. That's America, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> that's what I'm saying. I don't even know. I don't even know. Oh, say, can you see? Oh, yeah, that's America one still. See, I don't know. Yeah. yeah. So it's interesting that it's like. But do you know the Nigerian? I, I knew that was coming. I don't know the Nigerian. Nah, nah, but the Nigerian one is just, I don't think there's any words in that one. It's just like a band. The only reason I know, the only reason I know it, yeah, is because it was in a, it was in a song. Let me play, let me in see. In an Afrobeat song. Mm. Let me see it. So I don't know, From like, back in the Barbados day. or Jamaica, so same thing, but we didn't grow up doing that. But my grandparents, they sung the British national anthem growing up every single day when they were growing up. <clears throat> so they all knew it. Oh, did you, wait, did you make, wait. Let me play the, let me play the um, Nigerian national anthem. Uh, 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 the best sounding uh, one for me is Brazil. Brazil is the best one because I always used to watch Brazil growing up. This is Jamaica's one. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, yeah. Sick. I don't even know, you, you know. Got Jamaica. <laughs> um, nah, I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> let me play the Nigerian. I knew you were going to do that. Hold it. <laughs> That is cool. Vibes is free. Uh, Do you see the tweet when someone said about vibes? Looks like Dizzy Rascal now. <laughs> I know Dizzy was. I know Dizzy was fuming, bro. Nah. That is so mean? cheeky, bro. <laughs> when someone said that, I'm, so nah, like you see, you see the internet, yeah. Yeah, it's far, the, bro. Like you just mind your own business and you just get <laughs> just a slap, get, bro. That's it. You get a slap. Um, Nigerian. Oh yeah, when are you gonna address Charlie Mace? Can't bother, man. <laughs> Because I see They said they were guilty. It's called Arise, Arise O Compatriots. What, the Nigerian one? Mm. Yeah, I know I know it. Play it. 
It's playing now, but not, you know. Oh. This has cold. It sounds like Rocky. Man, we're on the drums, boy. Listen, that wasn't written by Nigerians. Yeah, we know it was. You know? <laughs> Jamaica's. Let me see, Jamaica's. Yeah, I should know Jamaica. Barbados. You see what happened at the Olympics with with um Jamaica with them um, the uh, hundred meters. Yeah, hundred meters, and even the women's. They didn't let. Yeah, it's mad. They didn't let home go through cause... because she had her own transport. Yeah, it's and mad. apparently they changed rules the night before, so they wanted to come in through coach. That's mad. That's how she missed uh, and last oh. the Olympics. It's interesting, isn't it? Yeah, it's mad still. So what is the house, man? What, Mentivity House? Yeah. It's um, a new community centre. So it's on the Ellsbury Estate. Uh, you know that Ellsbury Estate's been going up through a period of regeneration. So the regenerated part um, by Wolf Road, um, we've got a new building. So I actually secured the building in January 2021. Do you know how big Ellsbury Estate is? Mm. Yeah, it's massive. Right now. Yeah. There, be... There's one part where like, if police were chasing you, yeah, <laughs> there was one corridor on Ellsbury Estate, bro. I so swear. He knows. But uh, if you lick the top of that corridor, yeah, and yeah. run all the way to the end, you're yeah. in another part of um yeah. the area. Yeah. Completely. You police are not catch, catching you, bro. Bro, you okay. could get from basically from Woolworth Road to pretty much Elephant and Castle without touching the ground. But uh, bridges, it's like a maze. So police knew already. If you if you if you're running and you got into the estate they're and like, you hit that floor, you're gone. They're like, it's fine. They're done. Yeah, it can't that's, why, that's why they knocked down the bridges yeah. in '99. Okay. Yeah, because they that's what the police asked them to do. But um, yeah, it's mad because that's I grew up there for 25 years of my life. But my all my work's been around the Ellsbury Estate for the last 26 years. So I started working there about the age of 16, and um, I always wanted you know when I set up activity, I always wanted to have a space for us, a home for us. Yeah. And um, yeah, it took me a while, but got this building in January 2021, but it took me three years to get into the building pretty much. Okay. So we only got in in March 2024, the 11th. So where was, where was home before then? <clears throat> schools. Oh, <laughs> we literally, the States. Okay. We, yeah, so how I set it up is that we were going to schools to go and do like one-to-one mentoring with young people, okay. like group work, group mentoring, and just supporting young people, educating them around things that they wanted to know about but didn't know about in school, yeah. like emotional regulation, like... Just branding, like reputation, like how to build rapport, like just all, just There's trivial life skills, stuff. Basically. Yeah, like yeah, literally. Yeah, so yeah. they would, they would literally, we'll consult them and say, look, what do you want to learn? And they'll be like, we want to learn about this, or we want to learn financial literacy, or we want to watch a series of Top Boy and then write a series review. But like, all right, cool, let's do that. So we used to go to like people refer units in schools across, like uh, from Southwark, so one in Peckham, uh, and then we had boys come to us at the Brandon. Um, Youth club, so mm. that's where we were for the first year, uh, pretty much. But I was just on like two, three days a week. But we didn't have the keys to the building to like yeah, run yeah, stuff, yeah, and yeah, yeah. it wasn't yeah, our lease. Yeah. But yeah, so we got Mentivity House now. So we launched that, which is like a full circle moment for me. I used to walk down Westmoreland Road, oh, yeah, it's dope. and now we've got that building there. So it's just the start of, of something special, you know. Do you think it's important? <clears throat> um, because we've had this conversation on this pod like years ago, and it comes up every now and then, and there's for and against. So, for mm. example, people have said, like me growing up, I said youth clubs were important yeah. because that was where, apart from school, because luckily for me, I went to school outside my borough. I went to school in Lewisham. Where did you go? St. Joseph's Academy. Oh, you went there with my cousin? Then. Oh, that was it? Yeah, Carl. Carl? What, Thomas? No, no, no. Burnett. Carl Burnett. He's younger than you, though. Okay, cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I will talk about it after. Because <laughs> I'm up by his face, I'm up remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, luckily for me, I lived in East, mm. but I went to school in South. So, I knew oh, nice. so many different people. Yeah, do you know what yeah, I'm saying? So, yeah. my um, take on relationships and meeting new people and mm. being social was very different to yeah, most yeah, people. Yeah, yeah. I wasn't just stuck in my area and just mm. saw that. Mm. What I'm saying, but youth centres or youth clubs were a place where, especially there's one in Devon's Road. 
Mm. And I used to go there. Dizzy would go there. Um, Tinchy would go there. Yeah. There were so many men from the area. Newham would go there. So, like, it's mm. like everyone knew each other. Mm. So, yeah. there was, I'm not saying there, was, there would always be issues, but. But you were familiar. And someone might be like, nah, that's my bedroom, man. Yeah, He's like, cool, like, man. Allow it. He plays ball. <coughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying? Bedroom. So, yeah, people yeah, yeah. like, there was none of this. Where you from? Who? You, nah, nah. Yeah. Oh, nah, nah. He's cool, man. I know him. I've seen him. Yeah, you know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So it built like a bigger community Definitely. in regards to like the area and yeah. then the talent. You could see who had what talent, who gravitated to what. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But then I've heard other people argue that if you give kids nowadays youth clubs, mm. it could be problematic because of the way they're acting. Yeah. And they know where someone could be at a particular time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so. Like do you think that youth clubs worked for us then mm. because of how we were? Or do you think youth clubs can work now for how kids are now? Or, do you know yeah. what I'm saying? No, I, I, it's a difficult... It's a funny argument because the thing is we could just not have youth clubs yeah. and let things continue to go on the way they are. Yeah, true. And things are mad right now. Okay. So we've got to try something. Mm. And I think the youth clubs that we had back in the day are not necessarily going to be youth clubs we have today. So we've got to revolutionise it and make it something which young people can access and for this this age, you know, and looking at, you know, digital media and marketing and things like that, you know, mm. and tech and get into construction as well as playing a table tennis, as well as like just trying to be able to increase your social capacity by being around other people your age. And I think that's important. And that familiarity is so important because what we're seeing now in communities is that there's no links to these people that if you get into beef, I don't care about you. Who are you? Yeah. So you've got no empathy. Whereas if you know somebody, you're like, no, I know such and such. You might think twice, thinking, how might this impact them or their family or my community? Mm. So now you've got young people just out there who've got no attachment to their community. They, they don't trust adults. They're vexed. They're angry. They've been told every single day at school that they're not going to amount to anything. So then when you come to a youth club, you're being like poured into. You're saying, look, you could do this. You know, you could do that. And you're building relationships with adults from the very same ends that you grew up on. Yeah. And it makes a massive difference. So... For me, I didn't even go to youth clubs as much as I wanted to because my mom just wasn't on it. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. The one that was local to me was Kids Company. So Kids Company was a madness. That was on like in Campbell. And there was a whole heap of madness going on in there. But out of that, some people went into doing other things. So my mentor, Abdullah Ben Kamal, he worked at Kids Company. He was a youth worker there. And he realized that how bad it was there. And he just thought, you know what? I need to set something up myself, which is a football club, which I ended up playing for. And there's different types of youth youth clubs. You know, that was football. Yeah, we went yeah, to yeah. football and we went to Bethan Adventure. And that's where I chilled with my bridgens that were from Lewisham, from Peckham, from Bermondsey. Otherwise, I wouldn't be mixing with them. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's very, very important that we, we replicate that now. We recreate that for this generation, but we allow young people to have those voices to shape what they want. We can't just dictate to them as adults, like, this is what we're doing and that's what you're going to do. Because they hear that in school and society every single day. So we have to work in collaboration and we have to increase their social mm-hmm. capacity. I think it's important as well with kids because I've said it in this pod so many times where, you know, like, you might hear music they listen to and you're mm. like, we listen to. I'm like, it's dangerous to do that because when we were listening to Grime when we were growing up, our parents <laughs> done the same thing to us. Yeah. So you have to not be the old head in the room yeah. and allow kids to be kids and be yeah. different. And even the slang they're using, mm-hmm. you're going to get to an age where, like, you're not, your slang ain't really, yeah, the, it's, dead, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. it's dead now, do you know what I'm saying? Like, you say something to them, they're like, what? Like, bro, bro, don't say to you, oh, I, you, I'm that, like, you, you know when they call you unk, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how so you know you're old. Yeah. <laughs> See what I'm saying? So it's, yeah. for me, it's like, I think it's very important to, as adults, to try to understand kids mm. and allow them to be different. Yeah. I don't understand you completely and that's fine. Yeah. But, I've got the experience, you haven't, but you've got experience of living yeah. now, now at that age. So I can learn from you. So and I can learn from you. And that's that reverse mentoring, that two-way mentoring, that's important because you think about our households, we had the grandparents in the house, we had the parents, yeah. you know, we had the children, and there was all sorts of like learning and mentoring going on and we've lost that, we've lost the community. And I'll be real with you, when you look in the communities, you go to the Elsby Estate, you go to the Summer Layton, the community's gone. Like the yeah. elders, like, the youths are not even looking after the elders. Like they they will see your grand struggling with bags. They won't take it off them, like some of them anyway. And that's like 15, 20 years ago. That was unheard of. You'd yeah. see like, Mumsy, you know what? Let me come and help you with the bags. And yeah. you know what I mean? There was a level of respect. But now the young people are just literally just turning against their communities. And they just don't care. But because they've been ignored for so long, what do you, what do you expect? You know what I mean? The village isn't really doing what it should be doing. So as yeah. adults, we've got to do a lot more. And I think what you said is really, really like, 
important around coming down to their level. That's what youth work's about. You have to come down to the level of young people and actually start educating them from where they're at. Yeah. Just the same as adults. If I start coming and be like, oh, you say to me, oh, I don't understand this. Well, are you done, bro? Like, you're never yeah, going to ask me a yeah, question. Yeah, 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 so you've got to be like, oh, why do you think that? Like, where did that come from? Yeah. Where did you learn this? And you've got to really explore through that conversation. Do you, <clears throat> do you feel like a lot of people just don't have patience anymore? Yeah, yeah. I mean, look, people don't even watch a minute video, you know, on TikTok or mm. Instagram to get bored. So, and you think people undiagnosed with ADHD and lots of different things like that. So patience is, is is lacking, but we haven't built that capacity in people to have patience. Do you know what's weird as well, yeah? I don't know how, I don't know how this is going to come out, yeah? Mm. But you see, back in the day, yeah, like you had to go and get, see see someone and get diagnosed. Yeah, yeah. To say you had something. Yeah, 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 yeah. Whereas nowadays, bro, <laughs> man, I'm just telling you, yeah, how yeah, do you yeah. know I'm <laughs> still online? Yeah. <laughs> but you had a headache. Yeah. <laughs> now, all of a sudden. Yeah, it's wild. It's this wild. This is your condition. Man, yeah. I, got, I, got AD, I got ADD. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. How do you know? Yeah, yeah. But I'm telling you, man, yeah. I just got ADD. But man. it's like they, they use it to make excuses for their behavior. Yes, yeah, some people do. You know what I'm saying? Some people, people do. Yeah, like, it's you difficult. You can't even tell no more. Everything's changed now. Back in the day when you were in school, yeah. How many people had lactose intolerance? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We didn't have a choice. How many people I, had... did, I did, not. know. No, not, that... But every day for like six yeah, months, so third period, bro. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to the toilet, the yeah. teachers while I'm sneaking in, tearing off the <laughs> toilet. Then I'm coming back, I'm like, wait, what's going yeah, on? Yeah, yeah. I'm drinking you nourishment for breakfast. Oh, yeah, but that's you know, no, standard. I didn't know. You know that, I'm 13. <laughs> yeah, but what the, no, but the milk in that container Brother, has been shipped from Istanbul, bro. <laughs> It's been there for seven months. Fermented. Bro. Really bro. Eaten, cool. bro. Really yeah. It's Listen, been in the hot country, cold country. The only thing and I what like, flavors will you have? You probably have the coconut, the mango. Nah, 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 it's very bad on it. Strawberry. Mango. Mango, mango. Mango milk. No, wait, wait. What, <laughs> I what I don't understand. What I don't understand is, yeah, I'm open enough. <laughs> <laughs> I'm open enough to say it now, yeah. Where this my bread is like, no, I'm not lactose. I'm like, brother, you're struggling because you drank orange juice. Yeah, yeah. This is years of... What I'm just saying is, back in the day, there was... There was kids like that, but there weren't many of them. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but what I'm like saying, most kids can drink milk, they bread, whatever. Now, kids nowadays, but I saw a program that was saying that the problem is a lot of parents, the new age parents, are removing stuff from the kids' diet. Yeah. Which is fine, mm. but what you're doing is you're building the tolerance in that child no um, body. Yeah. So they're not used to, for example, peanuts. That's why so many people yeah, have peanut yeah, allergies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because a lot of parents have taken peanuts away. Mm. Then you introduce it at seven or eight with peanut butter or something child breaks out because yeah. they're not used to having mm, it. Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? You're not giving your kids milk. You're not giving your no, kids bread. There's no carbs with four marbs, man. <laughs> what, at seven? But I know some girls who start eating baby food before a holiday because they're trying to lower the calories. I'm Mad. like... What? Wait, that's, what? That's, that's, so now if they have child... If they're with child here, yeah, what do you think the child's eating, bro? Baby food. Yeah, but the child's six years old. <laughs> well, you can eat baby food as well and chips. I don't know. What baby food and chips. <laughs> <laughs> what I'm saying is we don't know. Uh, but yes, crazy. I'm saying like, and I feel like parenting has changed because mm. I feel like people say our parents were like very forceful and they led by fear. Yeah. But I feel like they were on that side and the new age parents are all the way on this side. Yeah, yeah. You've got to have a balance in, in the Definitely. middle of, because that voice in your head a lot of the times like, and that might sound mad, but, you knowing, oh my God, I'm going to get caught for yeah, this yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. The thing is, yeah. We'll regulate you sometimes saying, Trust. the man that we're doing is like, you're like, you know what, you man, i got to just be home yep. for a certain time yep. because you knew the slap I'll get through the door. Yeah, yeah. I didn't I, want the slap. There's yeah. certain kids that are stepping to teachers. Yeah, it's mad. Do you hear about the stabbing happened. in East London? No, nah, it happened in, our, in our day. There's a, there a young man that stabbed the teacher. See? Seriously? And yeah, and it's crazy. You know what I mean? And it's actually in the circle of people that my wife and I know. And it's... It's just crazy that that's happening. And that's what I'm saying to you. That level of disregard for people in mm. general. Like teachers, that was, there was a boundary yeah, there. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. you couldn't do it because you thought, right, I'm going to get excluded. Yeah, that's my teacher. Getting excluded back in the day was like... Was mad. You knew. suspended. Yeah, yeah. You were like, oh. Because you just turned into that you at the end of school on the bike, yeah. in school uniform. Like, yeah, I just went center. But even his parents, not in a rude way, but like that couldn't be my parents because mm. if I got kicked out of school... You did not say Brother, you think, number one, I would have a bike. Yeah. <laughs> That's one thing. But I would have to put a knife in the tire. Brother. <laughs> num number, number two, where are you? Mm. Yeah. Like, no matter what you're doing, you're either coming with me somewhere. Yeah, that's it. Or I'm sending you back to Nigeria that's or something. It. Like, you're not, you're not going to be just a delinquent. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But no it, choice, yeah. No choice. Yeah. What's I'm saying that the issue nowadays is that there's... It's, there's obviously, there's certain levels of parenting, but 
a lot of kids, they don't have fear. Mm. Because in our day, for example, I wouldn't dream of hitting a teacher. No. The brothers in your school that did, you knew already who they were. Yeah. yeah. These were the, the bad breeds mm. that like, they're the ones that like, you don't even chill with after school because you yeah, might yeah. catch a, yeah, yeah. Uh, a joint enterprise yeah. case. <laughs> yes. So you knew already, these were the man that were just, whereas now I'm, I speak to teaching the lab, like, Marv, the kids nowadays are bad. Mm. As in, the way they talk back to teachers, the way they don't care about certain I think, things. I think it goes back to what you said in um, the point that you made just before this point, yeah? Where you said it's two extremes. Yeah. So you've got the youths that are easily influenced, mm. but they don't really have an identity. They don't yeah. know what, what they want to do. Mm. So they look at someone else. And more time, they look at the person who's on badness. Yeah, yeah, yeah of yeah, course. Yeah, yeah. So he's able to kind of recruit more. Mm. And I think that's what's happening now. The population of those bad kids in classes it's just more now. And also, some of them parents were coming to school and bad up the teacher. Yeah. When it's their, their kid was yeah. the problem. Yeah. And, and that's what, you know what? I think you've hit the nail on the head with the parents. What we've got to understand is that some parents are just our parents. Yeah. They're just there in their children's life, living the way that they've always lived. Yeah. And a young person's looking at them like, okay, that's the way to live because that's their influence every single day. Yeah. So when they go out in the world and they just continue doing this madness, and they get the same results. They're like, this is normal. Yeah, this is normal for me. So this is why people outside of the home, when you go to schools and do mentoring or they engage at youth clubs, like, that's so important because they're seeing now a different type of adult. And they're thinking, bro, like, this guy's from ENDS, but yeah, he's doing all this yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's not been in the trouble that I am or he was in that trouble, but he's moved away from it because he's seen where he's going to go. But yeah. the, the lack of critical thinking in young people outside of school, where do they get to learn about critical thinking? And even in school, it's around things that they don't even enjoy learning. Yeah. It's, it's so they don't that, get to practice. It's mad that you say that, yeah, because you got to think about it. Those same kids you're talking about, you, where yeah. do they get that learning? Because some of them are adults now. Where do they get that learning or critical thinking? Life, which, which adults? So, some adults today used yeah. to be the kids we're talking about. Mm. I'm saying, at what part in their lives do they adopt that level of critical thinking? Some, some of them don't. Now yeah. they're 30, yeah. is what I'm saying. Yeah. And they're just cutting through. Yeah, it's like, a, it's like a delayed childhood. Like, literally, mm. it's like an extended adolescence. And that's the... Even for me, I'll be real. When I think about my journey as a man, I didn't feel like a man probably until my mid-30s. I'll be real with you. Mm. Because I didn't see myself in certain realms of society because of the way that my society saw me. Yeah. So I literally kind of belittled myself in certain areas where I shouldn't. And it was just, it was, it was crazy because I'm not that type of person. Yeah, Everyone that yeah, tells, yeah. you know, like say, not say, he says it, how he feels, you know, he's in the room, you know what I mean? That's how I've always been. But it's difficult when you face something every single day, you know, like that negative stereotype around yeah, racism yeah, yeah. or who you should be or whatever. So it makes it difficult. But you think now with people that get to that point, because I'm seeing a lot of men my age and I'm 41 and I'm seeing a lot of men my age now getting to the point when they're thinking, right, you know what? I need to fix up because I'm going to be alone. Or I need to start looking after my children. I need to start thinking about the future because where I'm going, I'm going to be alone. Yeah. And that is the most scary thing for when you're getting old. Like, I'm going to die alone. I'm going to be alone. So we're seeing a lot of men now start to access therapy, start to think about, you know, what can I do to improve myself? Because you think about our parents and the parents before that, like, it's literally social conditioning, you know, through the last four or 500 years. So people are actually just trying to heal now. And now they're actually getting the capacity you think about the generation before me and before that, they didn't know how to heal. They just got on with it. Mm. Yeah. So then when people are dying from hypertension and all these different things, that's all stress. Oh, uh, listen, I say... High blood pressure. Yeah, it's all stress. <sighs> because what we, we had to just continue. Like, you think my mum growing up on, on herself on the Ellsbury estate with seven children could take a day off? Mm. Mm. No? But I think it wasn't an option. I feel like sometimes... Exactly. When, it's like when you go into a training shop and you see white Air Force and black Air Force. Yeah. Make a choice, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you go into Foot Locker now and you see like a whole uh, wall, mm. you're in there for like 20, 30 minutes. Like, I yeah. don't know which but one I need. I think see what, what I'm pe saying? What people do is they avoid the stress that that puts them under. Yeah. yeah. So that puts them under stress. Like some people don't, like, again, we're going yeah. back to people who yeah. we're claiming lack critical thinking. Yeah. You're asking them to make a decision. Mm. They're panicking. Yeah. Literally. And it might be little to you. Yeah. You're like, just, just make a decision. Yeah. To them, they, they've never had to. But think about it. Even like, imagine girlfriends, partners. What do you want to eat? I don't know. <laughs> Go back and forth, back and forth. And it's like, even those little things. So just, what we've got to do now is... just to the body. <laughs> <laughs> make a decision, man. I love but even like with young people, it's mad because imagine you're now going through your whole life not making any decisions being told what to do over and over again, being told that you amount to nothing, that you're going to be a drug dealer, you're going to be a criminal if you don't learn about Shakespeare, if you don't learn about 
in yeah. British history. Then you get to 18, and then the whole of society says, all right, cool, make a decision. You're an adult now. They're like, what? Mm. I don't know what I'm doing. Like, no one's taught me. So then they turn against society, and they think, you know what? F it. I'm just going to do what I want to do. And then you start learning about credit. Because <sighs> now you have access to things that you didn't have access to. Yeah. You think you're making a good decision? Yes. <laughs> 25 and telling you, what's your credit score? Yeah, yeah. 400? <laughs> that's no joke, bro. Trust me, hey. you can't get nothing. It's just different, man. Yeah, right? so it's, it's mad. And that's what Mentivity seeks to do, you know? Yeah. It's just bring communities together. Showcase to adults, more importantly, that we have to continue to give back to young people because if we don't give them that support, that guidance, then we're going to see, continue to see what we're seeing in society. And me personally, over the last, what, since 2008, I've lost 13 young people to violence. 13. 13. 13 that I've worked with extensively. 13. And, the fact, and you know what's mad? That will take its toll on you as well. I don't, yeah. Because it, there's times where, like, you might even know of a you, mm. not really talk to him, and then, like, you hear something happens, you're like, right, that's sad, man. Yeah. But then when you're actually speaking to someone day in and you're building relationships with them, yeah. you're actually telling them, like, don't go down the wrong path. Like, mm. this is what you should do. And if that happens to them, yeah. it must take its toll on you still. Yeah, yeah. It happened with um, Raheem. So Raheem, well, he's, he was known as GB. He's part of Moscow 17. He had a whole Zone 2 Moscow 17 beef. And I'd known Raheem since the age of eight. So when we lost him at the age of 17, and he's the only one out of the, the, the 13 that got shot, the rest was stabbed. He got shot. And why it was so shocking is because he was with me on the day that he died in the morning. And he actually was coaching at my football club in the city. So there were shots popped off on the brand of the state the night before, and we knew that. So he was coming to work. He just came back from Jamaica after being there for about seven months because he got stabbed. We made a decision based on what we saw with his mom to send him back to Jamaica. So he went back to Jamaica, and then he didn't even have a phone. He didn't have a smartphone, so he couldn't see what was going on, but he was happy. He was working, doing his thing with his uncle. He was cool. Then he got a smartphone, and then he was on Snapchat, and he saw like he was missing out. So he's pushing his mum like, I want to come back, I want to come back. And she called me, I remember. She called me like February 2018. I was like, Safe, Raheem wants to come back. You know what he's like? And I'm like, listen, I can't tell you what to do, but I don't think he should come back. If he does come back, this is what I will do. And this is what I think you should do. We will give him a, a bit of an internship to start coaching because he loved football. He was a Liverpool fan. He loved football. But also, he was interested in architecture. So we said, look, we're going to try and get him into some sort of apprenticeship, getting yeah, close yeah. to that. So he came back February uh, 2018, and then within three months, shot dead, 5th of May 2018. And that one really hurt because I went to school with his mom. I went to Kingsdale. So, and his mom actually looked after me when I was in school. She was two years older than me. So when I was in year seven doing my madness, fighting year 11s, fighting year 10s because I needed my reputation, I was just misguided you. She was like, well, you, you're intelligent, you can play ball, like, you're a likable guy, like, just mm. allow it. And only when Raheem died, I, that, that flashback came back to me. I was like, oh, mad. Mm. Imagine she mentored me and, and supported me in school. And then I was doing that with her son for about nearly 10 years. I didn't know it was his mom until about 15, 16, when we had a meeting at the school. You saw her, and it was like, this man who was like, hold on, you, you went Kingsville? And she was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it was mad. That is, so, that is yeah, man. So when we lost, so when we lost him, that that did take its toll on me. Like that's when I started therapy, and like I'm like happy to say that that helped me in my recovery as a man because I got to the point where I just couldn't sleep. I kept reenacting what happened to him mm. on that day and thinking it was gonna be a different result. But I kept waking up. I was mm. I was sleepwalking. I remember I'll be reenacting like trying to fight the people off that shot him, and I was like hitting like door frames and stuff like that. And I remember waking up. And my partner at the time, she was like, you need, you need some help. And I was like, looking at my arm with the bruises, like, yeah, I do. And that's... Do you know that's mad as well, yeah? Imagine, that's, that's you saying that from a um, position of someone you looked after. Yeah. So imagine the, the kids on road now, the actual bridgings, mm. Mm. is going through all of this and they but feel like they have to defend them. Some of them actually... Because someone came up to me in the um, gym today mm. and was like, you know what? The way you lot tackled that um, taxi mm. saga was sick because he was like he's from the roads as well and he was mm. just like I understand what people are going to say yeah. but if you're part of that life this is how it's this is how it kind of just yeah, saying so yeah, yeah. You, you like you have to make a decision yeah, you if do. that's what you're going to do you you thinking that oh, I'm the one that it's not going to happen to yeah yeah it's naive show man. us yeah, show us the odds of people that it hasn't happened to <laughs> that stay that long you know, you know what I'm saying like yeah, yeah. 
It's mad because <clears> even <throat> we do sessions with young people and around like child criminal exploitation and county lines and stuff like that. And uh, actually, my brother Tyson, like he did all these stats, like and he he posed a question to a young person. He said, "When in your life have you ever seen a retired drug dealer?" Silence. I was even sitting there like, "Bro, actually." He said, name me a film where the drug dealer wins and survives and lives happily ever after. Name me a time when a drug dealer, do drug dealers get pensions? And the children were just like this. Run. Like, nah. And then we started watching things that, you know, Scarface, all your films, always ends negatively. Mm. So they've got to understand that it's there, the message is there. But are you going to be the one to actually go against what you're doing right now? And even with a young man, Jeremy, same thing. He was like, and we knew he was selling drugs. And he was like, yeah, 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 cool. Nah, I'm too smart for this. I'm too smart for this. I'm going to make my money and then I'm going to move back to Colombia. I'm like, bro, listen to me. Like, this is not the one for you. And as soon as he left school, literally turned 17, Oxford, Oxford Street, he was the one that got killed in 29, 2020. And it's literally just, we knew it was going to happen. And obviously, man was upset. But my mentors at Mentivity were just like, what can we do? There's nothing else we could do. Mm-hmm. We can't save everybody. So, and it's, it's, it's really like naive, but again, it's about that critical thinking that like these children don't have that capacity or they believe that they're the one that's going to make rules. it out. You know and I mean? also as a kid, unfortunately, you always believe that you're going to live forever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, as a kid, remember, think, think about school. Yeah. Everyone in your school believed that they were going to live to 80, 90. And look how but many then people think how, And think how many people from your school are either in jail, mm. died. Yeah. So I'm saying, obviously, there's a lot of people just doing their thing and yeah, yeah, just yeah. living their lives cool, but there's a few that, like, you're like, wow, hold on, my man's passed. Yeah. So I'm saying, yeah, from man. even even just from the world, natural causes or mm-hmm. like, uh, do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Think less of you now antagonizing the game of life yeah. by doing something that is very, yeah. do you know what I'm saying? Because drug dealing, you know, all these gang things, when you're in school, there's a there's a coolness to being with the man them. Yeah, of course. And being in, you know we, what I'm we saying? all did it. We, we all, all did it, did you it. know what I'm saying? Like, all did it. But then it's kind of like when you get to 18 and life hits you in the face. Mm. Now this is real men, like your age yeah, where you know, just, men are now is, doing, you know yeah, what I'm yeah. I think representation is important. Yeah. yeah. And also, um, I think when we were watching these movies when we were growing up, mm. the idea of the movie was like, the game is to be sold, not told. So, mm, like, even if mm. you get a piece of information that's bust you on something, yeah, 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 you're not even quick to share it. Yeah, you might yeah. keep it to your brethrens or yeah. even stuff like getting grants or you like you might get a grant. Yeah, and it's it's open to everyone who applies, <laughs> yeah. but you're holding it to yourself. Like yeah. their bank account is your number. Yeah, 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 but like, yeah. you only got the five k. Yeah, like, let us go in there and get the rest. Yeah, right? gatekeepers. But I'm saying, like, yeah. they just hold it to them, and then next thing you know, they're doing their thing. You're like, wait, what? What did you do again? Yeah, yeah. Ah, oh, it's too late to bring. Too late to bring man in now. Yeah, yeah. Ah, oh, so there's that. As well, and I think because the idea was we all wanted to be not all of us, but the aspiration was to yeah. be like the guy who was the top guy in the mm-hmm. estate. Yeah, more time the top guy in the estate was doing whatever he of was course, doing. Yeah. Of course, you know what I mean. So there's there's a mo- there's a moment I guess in all of our lives where something happened and we yeah. thought, nah, this ain't the route that man wants to but, go down. But it's also parenting as well. Yeah, my dad wouldn't even allow. Listen, that's my point. But now I look back at it and I'm like, why did I want to go outside and <laughs> shoot fireworks at 14? <laughs> Because it was fun. Because it was fun. Yeah, it was no, fun. I hear it, but how are you telling that to your dad? <laughs> I know. You wouldn't. That's the whole point. No, but my, my point is my dad knew what I was going out for. So he's like, better sit down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, you, like, you think I'm dumb? I've yeah. walked outside. I've done this. I've seen your youths. <laughs> I've seen the man that you hang with. I see what they're doing. Yeah. You're not going outside. But I don't know that. I'm 14. I'm thinking, oh, dad, you're oh, dad, allow it, bro. bro. What's wrong with you, man? Like, yeah. And the same with my mum. Yeah, my mum was, you know I mean? was like, on me, like, on me, especially on the Ellsbury estate. Like, what I experienced, where, where I lived, there was an area called Bagshot, and that's where all the drugs were sold. And literally, that whole demographic around there, most of them end up being on drugs. So mm. some of them now, they're my age, and they look like 60, 65. And there was so much violence on the Ellsbury estate. But I realized quickly at the age of 14, when I saw one of my brethren get stabbed outside Peckham train station, I was like, nah, this is long. Because I know me. I'm, I'm an all or nothing person. So if that happened to me and I survived, I'm going to go all out to make sure that I defend myself mm. if I survive. And I just said, I don't want that for myself. So I just said, I'm going to focus on myself. And then also I got assaulted by a police officer. And I was like, you know what? I need to focus on myself. I need to focus on what I want to do. And I wanted to play professional football. So I had something which my, was my passion. And then I needed someone which was my mentor, Abdullah Ben Kamar, to support me 
And Abs was known to everybody in Peckham. Like, he was just, he was someone that was going down a negative trajectory and said, you know what? I need to change and fix up for my younger brothers. And they're all from Morocco. So they were like notorious at the Ben Kamars. But now he's passed it on to me. And, and all the people that went to that football club pretty much are doing good. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? So it's really important that we pay it forward and we support the next generation. But yeah, man, it's, it's mad. It's what you see is what you want to be when you're young. I like Moroccans, by the way. Can I just throw that out there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The unity that they have amongst each other is sick. Beautiful, man. beautiful. Like, I've been Marrakesh a couple of times. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's, nice, it's isn't sick, it? man. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's beautiful, nice, man. man. And that's what we need to recreate is that family, man. Yeah. And that's what we have to do because if we lose a young person, we got to think, what if that hits my doorstep? We can't wait until that hits our doorstep to then start doing things. Yeah. We yeah. should be doing that thinking, you know what? Let's protect the village. Let's protect the community. Can I also give a p- just a piece of advice here? Mm. So um, I've always I've wanted to talk about this for time, and I think now is the right time to mention it. Yeah. So I went to go see um, Inside Out Two, mm. my daughter. Mm. Yeah. And what that movie does, yeah, is that it opens up the conversation you have with anybody who's aged between seven and fourteen, because mm. you kind of see how they look at life. So the way the, the movie shows you like different islands, okay, that they have in their um, minds essentially, right. yeah, yeah. and the characters are different emotions. Mm. So this might be a, a bridge to friendship land. So something might happen in her life where, um, this is not a spoiler, I'm just giving an example of like, she's playing football, they pass the ball to her, anticipation's high. So mm. the, the Joy character is excited, mm. but then she might miss the penalty, mm. for example. Mm. Her friends look at her a certain way, and now her anxiety is going off. Right. That character's going off. So now mm. it's like, when you speak to your child, you can say, the way you reacted earlier, how did that make you feel? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And then they can now say, I felt anxious. Yeah. Or I felt joy. Yeah. You, it breaks it down the conversation. Yeah. It's sick. It's a sick movie. It, Disney did, is it Disney or Pixar? That's Whoever did yeah, it, yeah. fucking well with that movie. <laughs> nah. <laughs> anybody, if, you, if you're close yeah. with anyone who's. We might use that then at yeah. your club, man. Yeah, yeah, thanks yeah. for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Close, yeah. Man said a Disney film and says, fucking good. <laughs> nah, <laughs> nah, 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 nah. Nah, 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 Top grossing film. It's ever, just entertainment. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Top big, 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 biggest film. No, biggest ever, I think. Nah. Oh. It's basically up there with Avengers. No way. Yeah, yeah, box yeah. Of right, I'm going to definitely put that on. Yeah, and that's, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's really good as well because like, my son's just turned 18 mm. and working with young people will allow me to be a better dad for him. And because I needed to be able to give him the space to make those decisions, to fail in a, in a safe environment, but also to express himself because yeah. he's me. You know, he's very emotional. So mm-hmm. when I was young, you know what happens. We get to a point, we start just suppressing our emotions and we get more and more angry, more and more withdrawn, have a low empathy for everyone around us, have more anxiety, more fear of what's going to happen in and around us. And then you lose yourself. And that's what I didn't want to happen to my son because that I had to recover from that at the age of, what, 20, 21? And I went through a lot of things myself. Yeah. And then thinking, right, how am I going to respond? And I was able to do that. But some people are not able to do that. And then, for me, then I regressed, you know, in my mid-20s by just doing just habitual silly stuff, you know, what I thought was cool, going out, drinking, popping bottles, all that stuff, that life, wanting to be that guy on the estate. And because yeah, football, because like, football didn't work out for me. So I'm like, yeah. this is what I got to do yeah. now. And then you start getting involved in things that you shouldn't be. I never saw drugs, nothing like that, but being around the people yeah. that you should, shouldn't be. And it was just like, it was then very hard to get out. So it can happen to anyone on our estates and where we grow up. And that's the, that's the difficulty. And especially now, if you've got those special educational needs, are going to be targeted, mm. you know, by the by the, the, the adults in the community. Yeah. And that's the worst thing yeah. for me. It's like, cool, if you want to live that life, live that life, but leave the children alone. Mm. Leave them alone. I think the, the most important take from this is that parenting and um, finding value in something. Because when you speak to most people that kind of was in those scenarios or those environments, mm. how they got out was because they had an interest in something. Yeah. So yeah. if you notice that, anyone yeah. who didn't have an interest was just... Do you know what I'm saying? Whereas for me, it was like football. Mm. For you, it was football. Yeah. For you, it might have been um, emceeing or it might have been you seeing certain people in your community and you're like, there's more than this area than this. Yeah. So you're, you you were like, nah, there's more to, there's yeah. more to life than Northwest. Yeah, but, Do you know what I'm saying? So the, and also then couple that with your mum saying, we're not going out, stay yeah. there. Yeah, Saturday's fuming. Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Coupled with my mum or dad saying to me, nah, follow me to the shop or you're not going out. Yeah. Or where are you going? Yeah. And then them seeing your friend and being like, ah, right, nah, he's cool, man. It's like, yeah. you can go out of him. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If, you ha- if, if we didn't have that, we might not be here, bro. Yeah, but at the same time, yeah, there's also kids that probably know what they want to do, but they don't have the 
opportunity because their parents are interested. True. And that's another thing. And that's why the community is so yeah. important as well to help them. And that's what literally what I say to young people. When I go and do assemblies, I say to them, find your passion, dedicate yourself to it and persevere no matter what. Yeah. Because that perseverance is going to help build resilience, which they need. A lot of young people don't have that resilience. Because mm-hmm. one of the issues that we have now is that competition is that people are frowning around, uh, on competition. Like, we're going to sports day and everyone's getting a medal. I'm like, nah, but this is mad. Yeah. So when so, I said, I said, that, I said that to the jarring, teacher, yeah, and the teacher was like, no, do you know what it is? Sorry, that's not it. One of my brethren was like, why don't you go to sports day with your daughter? Mm. I said, for what? Everyone gets, everyone gets, no, what am I blowing out my hands <laughs> yeah. for? Back in, the, back in the day, sports day, <laughs> when I was young. Egg on a, on a spoon. Listen, <laughs> man's beating everyone in that sports day. You get me? That's, give me no, my medal, man. Yeah, that's it, yeah. That's it. But now, <laughs> you know what I'm you're, you're getting, 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 yeah. getting it for just being there. I said, nah, it's nah, the same. So, so there's, no, there's no onus on winning because now exactly. the kids who win, I get the same as you come at eight. Yeah, and it's like, well, this also, is wrong. And also, what's, where, where do you install the discipline to want to do better? You're right. Right. That's another thing as well. Like, yeah. I want to be better than you. If I can just be mediocre and always yeah. win, yeah. what's going to drive me to be better? And you know what's yeah. worse? When you leave school and you hit the real world, yeah. they, they don't care. <laughs> but they competition don't, is they everywhere. Bro, they, gonna, they don't tell you, bro. Like, they don't tell you that, listen, bro. Listen. Finish, you finish uni. Yeah, that's <laughs> what you I want this job. What job? What? <laughs> you know, they open the door and they say, there you go. Yeah. Then by the time you turn around, they slump the door. the walls and the lines, bro. You're like, nah, this is mad. No one told me about this. No, like, you can't do that, bro. It's like um, this is so, this is so. Uh, it, I don't even want to say it. It takes it too dark. Uh, <laughs> too dark too but dark. I, I think that's that's the the main thing that I think. And also with kids growing up, you need to let them know that try as much things as you, yeah. you're young. Try as many things as you want. Yeah, yeah. not just one thing. I don't try be as to much. Make mistakes, man. And that's where you learn it because yeah. you have to be outside your comfort zone. And literally, that's what I'm saying to you. I just tell the young people what I went through, mm. and and by you know we all love stories. So when I tell them stories, they're like, oh, Rod, you did that. And you made a mistake and you mm. did that. Oh, oh, your bridges were pegging boys. I'm like, yeah, that was me. But I realized I wanted something better for myself. And football allowed me to then go into coaching, then to work with young people, then to go into schools. But, you know, you know, okay, another thing we're missing up. I don't know why, I don't know how I let this conversation go so far. <laughs> Social media, man. Big, uh, it's yeah. a big Bro, thing. It's not... Did you see this pod yet? Mm. The point he made before, mm. I was going to say, Mm. The point he made again, I was going to say. Yeah. Shout out you, bro. Come on, man. We've been this a long time. Yeah. When you finish, I'm going to piggyback off of that one. Yeah, nah, do your thing, my bro. No oh, pause. So, do you want me to... Go on, go on. You can have that Because one, social bro. media, they, was, they, they showed free... <laughs> 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 they showed kids from um, China and they asked them, what do you want to be? Yeah. And kids were like, astronaut, yep. um, doctor, mm. lawyer, for example. Yeah. Like, they asked kids here, I think here in America, where they want to be, YouTuber, yeah, social media influencer, yeah. See what I'm saying? It's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. So, social media is so powerful that kids now are looking at it like a majority of kids. They just want to be famous, yeah. Or I just want to like it's going to be all right because I want to be like this. It's like, mm, mm. nah, that's not how life works. Yeah. Like, even you know, the people you're seeing, yeah, the Damson Idrises, mm. the Daniel Kaluas, all these people, bro, they've been working for this that one role you see, yeah. Yeah. Been working for 12, yeah. 15 years. That micro culture, isn't it? Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, but everyone's yeah, like, yeah. I can it's, be famous now. But, yeah. but you're seeing people our age yeah. indulging in such. Like I saw one, yeah. there's a brother that I'm following. My man's on TikTok every night, 2 a.m., just yeah. chatting to yeah. random people. It's I bad. don't know who he's talking to, bro. And then he, he'll <laughs> repost it on his story. Like, yeah, had a good night. Yeah. Like, you don't want to sleep. Like, yeah. But this is someone my age. So what yeah. do I think? The, I don't, and he's got an, a big following. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. So I don't know who's following him or who's influencing. But what I'm saying is, there's so much to see on social media. Mm. If you want to see something and you believe in something, mm. social media is going to give it to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Is yeah. what I'm saying. Yeah. Somehow, you, they'll, they'll give it to you. Yeah, we have to restrict it. And you'll think, yeah, yeah, you'll think, oh, this is normal. It's the same normal. No, it's not. It's well, not. it's my normal, should I say? Yeah. My normal. I don't know, because again, outside, outside is mad. Yeah. <laughs> and, <laughs> so, and that's another thing I've realised. There's no such thing as normal anymore. Nah. Back in the day, normal was very like... Common. Common, yeah. as in this family unit or you go work, I do this, or kids. Normal was summer holidays. As soon mm. as school finishes, we're outside. That's it, yeah. Playing run at um, no Dr. Dan Ginger yeah. or <laughs> British Bulldog. Yeah. We're outside, 40, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, man, run outs. <laughs> and then you knew already, oh, I'm thirsty, but... Kids can't go in. If I go back in, that's it. For that I'm, drink, I'm not going back out, bro. So you just <sighs> that's so what you're trying to make me house. sneak in, yeah. Yeah. get a water and run back out. That's cool. It. But generally speaking, whereas now kids are just on their iPads. Yeah. You you you're fearful of your kids going out. 
Yeah. Because you know where they are. Where there's no safe spaces for them. Do you know what I'm saying? They're just going to be on road or on the block. And, and I'd be, be real, set, set up and launch a Mentivity House last week. We had 18 young people turn up with minimal, like, literally. We didn't, like, promote it or nothing. And then this week we had 41. They were there an hour before congregating outside. How, how big is the space? How many people can fit in there? We can fit probably on a good day. I can think we could have about 80 young people in there. Dope. So how are you going to manage it? Dope. What do you off mean? the back of this, there's going to be people pulling up. One day yeah, we've got staff. We've got there. staff. I've got 14 staff at Mentivity, but this is why we work in partnership with other organizations as well. So Mentivity can't solve all the problems. Mm. We can do our part. We've got Active Communities Network is run by um, Ollie. Oli Rahman grew up in the area, has been doing work for so long, but he's helped Mentivity to capacity build to get to this point. He actually helped us to get the building and helped us to write the bid to get the building. So now as part of that, we said we're going to work in partnership with them and now they're helping us do the youth club on Monday nights. Oh. Then there's other organizations like Inspire. So I'm going to approach the CEO and say, look, I know you're looking for a space. You want to run a youth club on another night of the week and then do another one on a Friday. But it's about really utilizing the space. But having this space is good, but it's got to be sustainable. And that's the problem is that we continuously look for handouts in our communities because we're used to that. Yeah. And there's sometimes you have to do it, but how I started Mentivity was a limited company. I didn't do it as a charity. So I did limited company first to showcase self-determination. So I worked for a charity and the charity, I'm not going to say who it was, but I realized that they weren't putting as enough money that they were securing yeah. into the community. I was yeah. like, nah, this is long. You're making money off of our plight. Yeah. So I said, you know what? Let me do it as a limited company. So then we offered services to the school to do on-site mentoring. And that's how we built it out. We went to a school, um, three young people, then it went to 10, then to 20. Then by the end of like six weeks, we had 65 young people and they're paying like 80 pound a head for the young, the young people. So then that's how I started to generate income. So I'm like, right, this, this model kind of works. Mm. But then I always wanted a home as well. So we've got the limited company, we've got the CIC, and now we've just formed a charity. So we've got the charitable entity. Now we've got the reputation because if I went out as a charity, they'd be like, who are Mentivity? Who are you? Mm. Yeah. Now, if you Google Mentivity or you Google SACE, you're going to see the track record. Yeah. So you're more likely to get the funding. I know this is a weird question to ask here, but you know them charities that you, you said you worked for before? Mm. What usually happens when all of a sudden the direction changes? They go. They disappear. Oh, so they just take the money and cut? That's it. Legacy done. That's it. There's nothing and there's a void in the community and then they have a mistrust because most of the workforce are people that look like them from the ends. And then there's nothing for them. And then they're like, oh, what happened? And it's like, there's no explanation. It's just they, they've gone. Yeah. And that's the problem. So we're Mentivity now. We seek to be sustainable. Obviously, we've got the corporate um, partnerships with Spotify. Goldman Sachs are our biggest funder. So I just secured a deal with Goldman Sachs late last year, £675,000 over three years at a minimum. Oh. What I then said to them is that once we do that, and that's off their balance sheet. So that wasn't really a donation because we're not able to receive donations because we're not a charity. But because they trust us and know what we're doing, they wanted to invest in us. And that's how I pose it to them. This is going to be your return on investment. That's the language that they understand. So with Spotify now, it's the same <laughs> thing. It's true though. You, you, you have to do it. You see a business, yeah? Do you know it's funny? Because even as like a friendship level, yeah. sometimes your friend needs to know if you're going to ask me for a favour, <laughs> how is it benefiting me? Just, just let yeah. me know it's a, it's a, before I make a decision. Because some friendships are like, brother, you can't ask me for that. Yeah, I don't understand yeah, like, yeah. why you... The audacity. Why, yeah, you, why, yeah. why do you think? Yeah. You could, but it's, it's the same in business. Like, yeah. do, do, do you remember when Kevin Hart was like, um, um, sorry, Monique was on Club Shay Shay. She said she met Kevin Hart mm. and she asked him for 10 mil just at dinner. <laughs> <laughs> so she tried to call him later on and he didn't answer the phone. Of course. <laughs> 10 mil what, at dinner. What's the benefit I didn't to me? My, I didn't finish my cocktail. <laughs> I bet you paid for dinner as well. <laughs> it's mad. She's complaining and said, Kevin Hart didn't answer the phone. Do you ask for 10 mil? Like, yeah, what do you yeah. think? I'm saying no presentation, just Nothing. yeah. I'm your auntie. Yeah, it's not, yeah, it's wild. Marvin, I ain't even give you ten mil, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you got a pitch to death, proper. Bro. You, you know, like proper better pitch. than you would to somebody yeah. else. Don't try to make it slack. Yeah, 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 mm. yeah, yeah. It's important. It's important. I've just, I've learned a lot doing this, mm. and like you said, going back to being in youth clubs and being social, like. We've got the gift of the gap. That's why we're doing what we're doing. Like yeah. you can, you know how to talk to people in different settings. You know how to do that, yeah. and that's a skill, and that's what a lot, a lot of young people don't have. So yeah, when I'm going switch. into the ballroom, I'm, I'm literally speaking their language. I'm not changing who I am. I'm telling them the realness, but I'm saying this is what it's going to do for you, and concurrently, this is what it's going to do for us. So we both look good, and that's how we built that. And you know, Mentivity as a brand, you know what I mean? It's it's reputable brand and yeah. it's taken nine years to get to this point but it's a, it's a I've been here for well. 26 no, so thank you man came to me in a dream you know seriously yeah so, well, you were sleepwalking <laughs> I love you bro <laughs> <laughs> I 
sorry, that was sorry, a one time thing. That was a one time thing. You see, this is why the man them don't open up <laughs> you because you start using what man said against them. No, but nah, I'm, you're bro. You nah, see, you see no. you, you see you. Yeah, I couldn't I help apologize, you, man. I apologize. I apologize. I might sleep walking general. He doesn't know. Nah, nah. On a real, it came to me in a dream because when I was made redundant from the charity. I was like, all right, cool. They were like, oh, you know, we put you in a redeployment pool. Like, what are you going to do? I'm like, I'm good. Just give me my dough. I was there for nine years. I was like, let me get my money and I'm going to set this thing up. Mm. So I actually created mentality when I was at university. I was at the University of East London. I was studying youth and community work and sports development. So that's when I created this, this whole model. And then when they said, oh, you're redundancy, I was like, sick. I'm going to try and set this up. But it was actually called Sports Men. So I was going to do it through sports. So sports mentoring. Okay. But then it was just too specific to yeah, sport. It wasn't yeah, yeah. like inclusive enough. So one night I was just sleeping and then like, I just had a dream. It was like mentoring, activity, men- mentivity came to me in a dream. And that's a gift from, from God, a gift from Allah. And I was like, you know what? I wrote it down. I remember messaging my brother and my business partner. Yo, I got the name for it. And they're like, bro, it's 3 a.m. Go to bed. Like, I was Sometimes, like, <laughs> listen, that's when, it, that's when it falls to you, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah, sometimes, yeah. Sometimes, yeah. You got to write it down, yeah. man. My boy, yeah. like my, my boy's thought about bare stuff, he says, in his dream. Yeah. And then he forgets to write it down. Yeah. And he's, like, he's, it takes a toll on his day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, that was a sick idea, man. <laughs> he don't remember it. Yeah, yeah. yeah right. it's, it's, Everyone's uh, got different dreams, like, mm. patterns. If you got that dream pattern, you're supposed to put a note. Note pattern. That's what I used to have, yeah. yeah. As soon as you wake up, yeah, write boom, it down. get into the habit boom. of, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, and it worked, it worked. So, yeah, man, it's, it's my life's work. It's a culmination of my life's work. Long may it continue, man. It's yeah, dope, man. man. Yeah, it's dope. sick, man. Yeah. I think I know Tian as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Tian, so. Tian's our chief of impact and operations. Tian has helped transform this organization. So big up Tian. Tian's just amazing, like track record. What she's done for Mentivity in not even two years, it's been 18 months, it's just been transformative. And I knew when I, I had basically headhunted and I said, look, you need to come and work for me because she was already invested. And I was like, you come here. We got, I got a role, but you build out a role. I want you to vet mentivity. I want you to give me feedback and let me know where we need to go to improve and just trying to empower it in that way. And she's just amazing, like yeah. literally. So her, my wife, uh, she came on as chief strategy officer, but she'd been helping out like one day a week for the last two, two and a half years. Now she's full-time in mentivity and now she's getting us to an, another level. And that's the beautiful thing is that we've got to understand that what we're good at as men. Now I know I can go out there, get the money, do the other stuff, do the front face and stuff, but behind the scenes, the women are just doing amazing stuff at Mentivity. So I'm really trying to get us to a 50-50 gender split by the end of the year and make sure that we're empowering, especially our black women, to do what they can do, you know, yeah. because they're the ones that, even when you think about the civil rights movement in America, like, it was all the women, you know. It wasn't Malcolm, they weren't doing none of the planning. They were just the front-facing people who did the talking and just got people going. But behind the scenes, it was the women. And even the black women, sorry to cut you, today, even the black women in the Black Panthers, yeah. people don't realise that a lot of the time, the men done a lot, yeah. but they were the ones who would get arrested yeah. and like put in jail. Mm. So like even the there was a thing they used to do where they used to feed like families. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah every yeah. I think it was a Sunday. Yeah, like, yeah. Black yeah. families could come and yeah. all food was free. So a lot of the time the black women had to burden that because mm. a lot of the men were in jail. Yeah. And they'll put them on in charges. It was like not terrorism charges, but kind of like yeah. those kind of charges. Yeah, yeah. So man, them would just—they ain't done nothing, bro. Yeah. There was one time when they said the courtroom was That's so, yeah, yeah, yeah. The courtroom was so full yeah. of like cases. It was like people just sitting on the floor because there were so many black people in the court. Yeah. So they were just trying to just so that put means, in jail. So that means when black women say that they're tired, it's literally... yeah. Listen, they carried they've carried us. Look, let's be mm, real. Yeah. And that's what we've got to understand is that this is now it's time for the men to step up. Mm. And that's why I'm saying even for me, like I just got married, you know, the other day, yeah. and since my wife has come into my life, just changed my life because she's held a mirror up to me and said, look, these are the things you need to improve on. And because of our ego sometimes, we're like, nah, brother, I don't need it. Yeah. But we've got to work in balance. And that's where it is because before you're formed in the, in the womb, you're, you're, you're me, it's 50-50 what you're oh. going to be. So literally, you have to have that balance. You have to have the same balance and really work with our women. And my wife's taught me a lot, man. Like She's come into my life. She's helped raise my son over the last three years. And that she's just a, a true blessing, man. So, She's taught me a lot and I'm realizing now what I need to implement in this organization to replicate really what the, you know, the Black Panthers were doing yeah. in the United States. But we've got to do it in a different way for us. And we had a civil rights movement here too. And again, the women were doing that. So we have to support them because when no, whether we're good or bad, black women are always there. We need to champion our sisters more, man. That's me. And also as well, Rosa Parks' husband had a car. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? No he's way. A, are you saying he's a waste man or? No, I'm not saying he's a waste man, but like, brother, you had to drop her to work, man. <laughs> 
She's there on the bus doing a mad thing. Like, did, I, but she probably just wanted to do that because <laughs> that's how she, that was the kind of person that she was. Mm. So again, but then we have to back them. Like yeah, they yeah. back us the same way. Facts. And I feel like men need to show themselves as well more in terms of, and I, I'm not saying, I'm not blaming men, but like, for example, like in terms of teachers, if you go to your daughter's school, majority of the teachers, mm. you've got a few men, how many black men are teachers? Yeah. Minimal. Not, not PE teachers. Not, yeah. you know, I'm not cussing whatever because we tend to be more active. Yeah. But how many black Male figure teacher, have you seen that? Right, it'd be a difficult job, no? I'm not. I'm not saying it's not. I'm not. I'm not blaming men. I'm, just, I'm not uh, saying you are. I'm just I'm saying just, it might be a difficult job. But I'm saying so, like, so like the, the way they learn has to kind of change. No, I just, I just, yeah. think, I just, I just think we're not interested in it. No, you're right. We're not interested in that job role. We don't see the value. Whereas women, mm. women are more um, empathetic. Mm. So that's why women tend to be nurses, mm -hmm. teachers, certain jobs where there's a nurturing, empathetic aspect. Do you know what I'm saying? You know why? Remind them we, we're not. But you know why? Because they're developing that from a young age. Mm. We're not taught to develop that. Yeah. And we're not, we're not in spaces where we can develop that empathy. Because mm. I think, even from my perspective, when I was young, the way I was, I was proper aggy when I was young because I had low empathy. Like, I'm Jamaican, I'm, I'm from Barbados. So Jamaican, our culture, we have low empathy. Just the same way that you made the joke about sleepwalking, that was my life. So when you get to a point, it's just like, all right, cool. I don't care. So I can't go. Do you have to apologize again? Yeah, of course or... you do. I'm joking. I don't even know if I dropped it. You look to me. You look to me a certain way. No, no. Oh, Taser's shocking. Nah, no. <laughs> no, no, not even, bro. Because Taser's saying, like, no, no. Taser's in a new bag now. So man's like, I know my feelings. And but now, that hurts. I'm cool. The old me, but I fall back. The new me, I'm cool with that. Yeah. But brother, don't, do... forget, don't forget where I'm from. You know? <laughs> but brother, do better, yeah? yeah. No, I'll be real, man. Yeah, it's true. And, and it's true. that's what I'm saying. Like, black men in education, we need to see it. We need to see more of that. Yeah. And that's why I take pride in doing what I've done. Like, when I was a teaching assistant in 2006, the way that the teachers used to talk to me, I was like, you know what? I want to fight you. <laughs> I want to fight you. The way they used to treat me, but because you know what it was? Envy and jealousy because I would go in a room, it would be kicking off and they're the teacher and I'm the TA. I'd be like, you look, all oh, sit down. They would sit down. Mm. But how do you do that? I'm like, I show them respect. Mm. That's it. And I'm here for them. And they, and, and, it goes back I, I, to the I, woman who sent Brett the email. And, and they see themselves in me. Yeah. Like they see me. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Shout that's out, that's um, very important. Adam and Emma though, those are my two mentors when I was yeah. in school. Love yeah, shout them out, man. Yeah, man. Um, Adam's gone on to like he runs a company called Jazz Refresh, mm. and then Emma, I see Emma out and about now and then in the festivals and that, <laughs> getting her groove on. <laughs> we have lives too, you know. Mentors yeah, have yeah. lives too, you know. <laughs> no, it's shout important, out, man. man. Shout it's them important. Out, man. Nah, it's, it's it's dope, man. I feel like big up to what you're doing. I feel like it is needed within the community because I feel like a lot of the time with, as I said, with teachers, it's there's it's the it's normally white women that are teachers. You've mm -hmm. got white men, but it's mainly white women. Yep. And so not only is it women, it's another colour that doesn't understand yeah. where we're from or some of the the cultural differences. Yep. So sometimes there might be misunderstandings with yeah. labelling a kid as difficult. He might not be he might be difficult, but kids are sometimes. Yeah, yeah of course. Or there's just a barrier where you have to understand each other. Yeah. Or you're not, because remember, if you see a kid, you're going to give, and it's not even a racist thing. You see a black kid, you just see yourself when you're younger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Or you might see your child. Yeah, yeah. So sometimes there's a bit of, behave, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But there's a certain, like, where you'll speak to them. And they will respond to that. And they will respond it, to it, that. There's an element of respect to it. Mm. You know what's mad? What you said about culture. Some teachers, when they're in these situations, for example, we had like white teachers and they'd be like, oh, this boy is always kicking off in my class. I'm like, all right, cool. So then we'd go in and sit in the back of the class and observe, not just the young person, but the teacher. And you know, after five minutes, everybody forgets you're there. So you're sitting there watching and you see how these teachers talk to some of these boys, these black boys. And when they're like trying to pull them up, like, okay, stand up straight. I'm talking to you. Look me in my eye. And you're thinking, this you is from Jamaica. He's from Nigeria. He's from, we don't look elders in the eye. Yeah. So when he's actually looking away, He's actually giving you that respect, but you don't know that because culturally, that's not your culture. Mm. So when you break that down to a teacher and they're like, oh, I've, I've learned something new. And they talk to the young person and then literally when they now telling that child, don't do that. And they're like, yes, all right, sorry, miss. Rather than focusing on your posture, your eye contact, all that stuff, the message is there now. And, all, and, all, and also, it's so not, simple. It's not even that. 
Stop buying up the you. <laughs> to, to and your forget breath, that and your contract. as well, Bro, man. Like, end of the day, like... Drinking coffee all day. Brother, and, me, man. And, the, and the deep red apple. <laughs> Garbage <laughs> apple, you know. Eye contact is just in my grill, man. Come on, man. Yeah. And also, remember, a lot of the... Remember, our parents... Well, my mum said to me, if anyone troubles you in school or a teacher troubles you, mm. tell me, I'll deal with it. Mm. But a lot of um, parents nowadays are telling their kids... Like, don't take rubbish from anyone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. now, there, there's, there's no differentiation of... No, no. My mom and dad used to say to me as well, be respectful of your teachers yeah. as well. Yeah. But only if there's an issue, do you deal with it. But like, mm. generally speaking, I'll send you to school to learn. No, I, but, don't, I don't want to hear from you. Yeah, yeah. Whereas a lot of the parents nowadays are telling their kids, whatever, whatever. So now, these kids, the chest they have for, for teachers yeah. is like, you can't tell me off. My mom's told me don't. No one talks to me it. like yeah, this. yeah, yeah. That's it. And so they're going, they're going to school like that, and yeah. the teachers are talking to them like that. Yeah, it's, it's, just, it's yeah. Bizarre. But then when you do, when you have that same attitude on road, then what happens? Yeah, it's true. And that's how you have to break it down to them because you know now potentially you're either going to get tumped up or you're going to get hurt. You know, in a more violent way. So that's how you have to break it down. Yeah. It's, it's 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 mad. Just, it's true. You know, there's certain man that they're like you see when I get drunk, I'm a mad man. <laughs> but uh, man, bad job the other day, bro. You didn't do nothing. I'm sorry, still. Recognize his badness. You, got, you, got, you turn sober. <laughs> You turn sober still. That's it, man. You know what I'm saying? That's stop it. So front to these kids, man. Hey, listen, Let them know the truth, I man. remember I went to I went to school, uh, Woodside High in White Hart Lane, so Tottenham, just on the back of Broadwater Farm. And I went in there because they needed a mentoring service. So I went down in 2017. I went in there, had my mentivity polo. I went in there. I'm like, cool. I'm used to talking to the to the children. And they just lost their mentor. So he literally lost his job and and didn't they didn't get to say goodbye. Yo, when I went in there, these Tottenham youths, they were not having Tense. it. Listen. I had to be like, hold on, I've worked in people with phone units, I'm from Peckham, like, they got to me, you know what, let me take off this badge. I said, you think because i got this badge on that you can talk to me the way that you're talking to me. If you came out on road and you spoke to me like that, what could potentially happen? And when I said that to them, they were like, all right, yeah, yeah, all right, cool, cool, yeah. cool. And then Because you ain't done nothing. Like, yeah, and it was mad, it was proper mad, but sometimes you have to show them in a controlled way what could potentially happen. And by even like being human and losing your cool sometimes to in a professional way, it lets them know that, well, you know what? I need to allow it because this person's here for me and they're not obligated to be here. Yeah. They're here because of me. And when you make them understand that, then that's it. You're, you, you, you can do the most amazing work. That but colour does play a part though. That's a gamble yeah. though. Exactly. Said, imagine I saw you on road. What would you do? Uh, come outside, this. Huh? <laughs> Listen, they put this bus back on. Let's go grab the fire extinguisher. They put this bus back on. Listen, 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 listen. <laughs> Kids got outside already, you know. <laughs> what, what? You still inside? Because <laughs> I told you, push me over. And listen, and come back and come back, come back. Listen, listen. Nah, that was Basically, the purpose that was of, the, scenario. of the scenario. <laughs> <laughs> So you guys, you see now how I manage that conflict? <laughs> <laughs> and listen, I love children, man. I love the way they challenge us, man. I they love it. I love it, man. Seriously. But I think ultimately speaking, as kids, if they're not bad breed mm. and not far gone... You can save them. They, they, no, they respect you, especially as you said, the colour thing. Mm. But a black man, they will see it as... There's an appreciation yeah. for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you don't even realise. Yeah, man. They don't even realise. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Even sometimes before it's too... Like, I worked in the people referring in Peckham. And, yo, it was the most challenging year of my life. I'll be real with you, but the most rewarding, 2007 to 2008. Um, and literally, the day I was leaving, I was leaving for another job as a full-time sports coach for Southern Council. Yo, when the children started crying, oh my gosh, like in the assembly, but I couldn't believe it. Mm. These were the most, these children were just like hardened to the world. They were like, look, just cold. And when I left, they all of them were crying. I'm talking like the most gangster youths were just like, Brother, I can't believe you're leaving. I'm like, look, I'm not leaving. I'm still going to be working in, in the community. But that just showed me the importance of this work and yeah. being there for children. So you see it inside out too, yeah? Mm. What that would have done is it would have broken a bridge mm. to one of their islands. Right, whether right. it was friendship, whether it was respect, mm. whether it was love. Yeah, so yeah. for them, they're like, nah, fuck that, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At yeah. that young age. Yeah. Excuse my French. You know mm. what I'm saying? Mm. But you see that. So you yeah. see the impact you've had on these kids. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Bro. Nah, man, trust me. I mean? And that's the beautiful thing. It's difficult now because I'm really behind the computer most of the time. So doing the youth club on a Mondays for me is that beautiful because that's the true essence of me. Like, I don't coach football as much as I want to now, if not at all. I obviously, used to run the wall of seeing a coach for 20 odd years, you know, Coach Jaden, Sancho, Reese Nelson, all these boys. But I don't get the chance to do that now. So getting that little time to do that youth club 
on a Monday it's like, yeah, this is this is what I why I'm doing it. And it reinforces. Is Sancho Sancho a bad breed or is, is it? No, it's a good youth, man. He's a good youth, man. He's a good youth, man. He's a good comes from a good family. No, I'm joking. I'm joking. Yeah, just, I'm listen, it's just one of those things, man. Yeah, I know, I know. You know, I, know. I used to do youth work before. I used to do youth work in Stockwell. Yeah, yeah. By um with Kemi. I don't know if you know this. Wait, on the Stockwell Park Estate? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Back yeah. when? This was this was time ago, man. The maddest thing is. It's, it's going to sound mad, but I got Tian a role there. Oh. So Tian, was, we, we used to speak, and she was like, I want to get into youth work. She saw me there. I said, oh, I'm going to get you a role. Yeah. So I spoke to Kemi, and I got her a role there. Yeah, yeah. So I think that's when she started it. Oh, so how long ago was that? Oh, man, I don't, I don't, this is time ago. Yeah. Ah, oh, so man, that's sick, is, man. My dad used to have a, uh, a cosmetic shop in that Stockwell estate bit. Right, right. So, like, where the barbershop is. Yeah, 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 yeah. The youth club was at the back. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know the youth club. So, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So, I, f- I kind of was familiar with the area anyway. Mm. Don't let him phone Tia and she says, no, you're chatting worse. You know? <laughs> 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 I, I, I phone Tia now, you know. I think she's on holiday now. She's actually. not angry, yeah. <laughs> I'm say that. Come on. <laughs> man, that's it. Hey, hey, let me just let you go. Know? You see that? Where's my, where's my, hey, where's my, where's my sound effects, man? You get me? Man, no, man, listen. <laughs> <laughs> you get it? I was just saying, didn't it? Yeah, no, I'm so bad. I don't lie, man. So now you should come down to Mentivity House. You should come down to the the. the Do you know? What? I was actually going to speak to you about sense. that because I've been wanting to get back into it. And one of my mm. brethren is Matthew. You know Matthew. Mm. Yeah, my Matthew. My bre- it, from Kingston, Matthew. Uh, man, what? And is that for Ashes, the world? Ashes, brother. Oh. Hey, come on, this is what, bruv. Matty, yeah, yeah. yeah Matty, Matty. Cool that's what I'm saying. Listen, yeah, yeah, the world's clean small. Hearted. Yeah, clean hearted. So that's my he, guy, man. He does um, mentoring, yeah. and, and he, he, I think like he would take one of the kids to like a cinema yeah, or yeah, yeah, yeah. whatever, and we'll speak. And I think I was supposed to join, but they didn't have any space at that time to yeah. do it. Mm. So I was like, "Oh, Matthew, next time, whatever, whatever." Yeah, but man. we never got back around to it. Yeah, but it's something that I want to get back into. Yeah, so man. We'll, we'll have a conversation anyway. Yeah, make it happen. Because I think it's very important. Yeah, and even because with Spotify, they're building that podcast studio. So. To their kind of specifications, so yeah. we're gonna be doing podcasts and stuff like that oh, as well for young people. Six, six, six. And it'd be good for you to come down and even do like a masterclass. Yeah, talk yeah, to the yeah. young people yeah, about yeah, what yeah. you do because they need to see it and they need yeah, to understand yeah. it. You know, from the very origins. Yeah, one hundred. Rather yeah, than just yeah. where you're at. So yeah. yeah, man. But it's really important, man. It's really important. But yeah, but, Matthew and Asha, that's my people. Yeah, that's, Kingsdale, that's, 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 that's my yeah. Kingsdale, man. And even Yusuf, Yusuf yeah, with Yusuf with Kingsdale. Well. That's my yeah. that's like literally little bro, man. Like literally, he was in my brother's year. And Gavin went. Did Gavin go Kingsdale as well? Gavin. Oh, I'm trying to, I'm trying to, I'm trying to remember. Oh, I don't know if Gavin did. Kingsdale was mad though. Kingsdale yeah. was like a giant youth yeah, club. Yeah. You know we had security guards in Kingsdale. Yeah, Kingsdale. When mad. I went there, we had security guards. It was what? mad. Yeah, Kingsdale was mad. Well, like searching that. You're no, searching. no, no, not the security guards was patrolling. That's how bad it was. When I went there, in '94, a boy got stabbed and died outside '94, and then we then when William Penn School got closed down, all those boys from Dulwich, from Peckham, from Brixton came to our school. So it was literally like blue story every day. It was ghetto boys. Peckham boys, 28s. It was, it was mad. I heard it was mad. So it was mad. But it was it, it was the perfect environment to because if you, you survived that... You could survive the world. Bruv, mm. like, living on Ellsbury State and then going to Kingsdale, it, it, it prepared me for life. And even when I, my brother was telling me that even, like, um, some of the Brixton youths that would be in that school mm. where Campbell, McDonald's was, yeah. that was a cut-off point. Yeah, 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 yeah. As in, like, Campbell was cool. Yeah. But then if, you, if you're from Brixton... Yeah. You go the other bit. Yeah. If you're from Campbell or Peckham, mm-hmm. you stop it at McDonald's. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, like, yeah. Like no, that bad. Data is just locked off. No, like, trust, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> trust me. Like, if you go past that, it's, it's a problem. I didn't go Brixton. Yeah, I, I just didn't go Brixton. And then when I went SFX, so I know you went Crash the King. Yeah, Crash the King. Yeah. yeah, so that was the two, the two social yeah, colleges. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when I went SFX, I had to go through Brixton and or get the tube and that. So then I became comfortable. And then I got friends in, in Brixton mm-hmm. through football and stuff like that. But yeah, we didn't go. We didn't yeah. go Brixton. Like, Peckham the was the limit. The kids the today, they don't, have, they don't have that. But they don't leave their estate. Yeah, see. When I asked a young boy, he was eighteen. I said to him, "Ah, oh, meet me at Waterloo. Then we're gonna go to the game." He lived on Old Kent Road. He says, "How do I get to Waterloo?" I said, "Bruv, that's insane. Have you got a phone?" He says, "Yeah. Have you got Google Maps?" Yeah, Google it. Have you got tube. The tube map or like bro, city map. Nothing. They, don't, they don't do it. Imagine That's we used to navigate crazy. without phones. We had A to Z. Brother. Oh. <laughs> my man said like, yeah, go. A Brother. <laughs> like, <laughs> said, like one of my, one of my, one of my, um, one of my, one of the things that I looked forward to when I was in um, college and uni, yeah, mm. was the ability to basically be in my car mm. and enter a postcode in the sat nav. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. I was looking forward yeah. to that. Like, what? <laughs> Fuck the A to Z, man. <laughs> now, listen, they got it. 
got two. Do you know they how got, easy it is? Back in the day, the car's taking them there. Yeah, no, yeah, back yeah. in the day, you would just do like a um, what do they say? A point. So if if, I, if you say to me, where do you live? You'd mm. be like, ah, oh, Hackney. Where bats? <laughs> I know, I, I know Mayor Street. <laughs> yeah. All right, all right. So you see the McDonald's, yeah? But no, <laughs> that's around about. Yeah. Here's that McDonald's. Right, There's a red so, pop for the corner, yeah? <laughs> the, the, that left. That's so 17th left. <laughs> right. You go to the Caribbean, that's Bro. how they give direction, you know? Yeah. Go past the post box, they yeah. take a left. You see, might see a dog. You see the dog? You, yeah, that's how it was. That's bro. how it was back in the wow, day, bro. Yeah. Or, or you would ring the person again. Mm. Or not, so sometimes you just park up and be like, excuse me, excuse me. Do you know where? Do you know how far? Um, do, you know, do, you know how, do you know how? Do you know how yeah, far back you know I'm what? going? Yeah, bro. Do you remember when we used to um, ring man from the phone box? So man knew where you were. <laughs> Oh, I've never done oh, that. Oh, five, five, four. Yeah. yeah, that's that four box on the high road. Yeah, it takes yeah. us there. Man, oh. man nah, I've never done that. Yeah. These children would never survive. You don't know survive. where a man is, innit? So you like, would... so you phone man on a phone box or one drop me and be like, okay, cool, you're there. Or everyone meets at this place. Yeah. At the certain at time. At this time. Yeah. If you don't make if it. If you don't, you're gone. then boy, that's it. I'm saying. We're going to Chesson. 11 o'clock. <laughs> that's Miss it. it. That's it's it. Not, yeah. Done. Yeah, Done. It's peak, man. It's different, man, but... This is why we're, we're, we're the best of the digital and analog. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's why we're very unique in terms of what we're doing. Even our resilience, you know. And that's what we've got to pass on to the next generation. It's so, so important. It's mad. I feel like our generation and our parents' generation were never replicated. Those nah. two generations mm. nah, man. are like, once they're gone... Golden mm. ages. They're yeah, gone yeah, yeah. because, remember, our parents were the, the kind of first to kind of transcend from that world. Mm. To the Western world. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So they were the kind of, they had the values of their yep. grandparents. Yeah. But they were in this new land. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, and right. they just had to get busy. Yeah. Like I got to work because. And then their we, work has allowed us to do and then, what we did. Yeah, exactly that. And then our gen was the first to, well, maybe it was some of the seniors were the second gen, but mm. Africans in particular were the first gen of our age here. Yeah. We were yeah. born here. Yeah. So we're here. So our house was Nigeria. Mm. Mm. But when we stepped into, the world, it was Britain. Yeah. Do you know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah, yeah, Whereas yeah, yeah, now yeah. the kids is like... It's Britain. It's, it's Britain, <laughs> Britain. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, no, gluten, <laughs> gluten-free <laughs> Britain. Do you know what I'm saying? Lactose tolerant free. That's gluten-free, you know? It's, it's different. Like, bro. Allow me, bro. Allow me. It's a different Britain, bro. It's true, man. It's true. Your feelings matter now. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. We don't eat that. We don't yeah, eat this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Back in the day, what? The only yeah. thing I might have heard is, we not eat pork. That's the only... When I grew up, maybe... Maybe, yeah, but that was it. Now it's bare things. Bare yeah. things now. But like you said, we got to meet in the middle. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's what, and that's what the recovery now and the, why this space is so important. And that's why we have this this campaign, you know, reclaim the block because oh. we we've got to reclaim these spaces. Not only the physical spaces, but mm-hmm. literally those spaces in the hearts and minds of young people and the community where empathy should be, where love should be, where community should be. Because mm-hmm. we've lost that. So that we're trying to raise a million pounds. So we're Challenging people to, to donate, a million people to donate a pound to get to a million. It won't be just for mentality, be for other organizations within the area. But just to make sure that we can enlarge the experiences of young people, like take them to Cornwall, take them on a trip abroad. Like we want to do these things to show them that, look, it's not just about the block, but at the same time it is. We've got to reclaim that block. So that's what we're doing now. I'm going to try and hold the Labour government to, to account because they've said they're going to invest in new services, they're going to do all these things, but you know what happens. They mm-hmm. say these things to get into power. Yeah. So, and that's where the power is, you know, and that's why the advocacy for young people and doing what I've, I've, what I've learned over the last nine years, I've learned a lot about me and how to utilize social media to amplify the voices of those that are unheard. And that's why it's important. And, you know, doing things like being in the, on the London Police Board, advisor to the mayor, I never would have thought I'll be doing that, but I have to do that because yeah. I'm doing the work on the ground around stop and search for young people and get them to understand their rights. So it's very, very important. And if I can do that with the support I had for my community, why would I not give that back? Mm. Why would I not say, look, this is my journey and my journey has been amazing because all I did was follow football and follow my passion. And then I had secondary passions out of that. And now look at what I'm doing. So where can everyone find what you're doing? Yeah, so Mentivity.com. Yeah, Mentivity.com. You can check out the website there. Um, And then you've got a lot of information about what we do and what we're planning to do. Um, you can find me personally, uh, Sace Holmes Lewis, on, on Instagram. Um, but yeah, that's that's where I'm at, man. But Mentivity House is open. If you want to use it for events or get in touch, we want to make sure that we're bringing back that community oh. feel. Um, we're going to be doing screeners, loads of different things at Mentivity House. So yeah, just, just roll up, come true. Man. And you've got the short film as well. Yes, with Spotify, man. The first documentary. So big up Adi Yemi Michael, big up Rick Salmon from, from Spotify. 
10 minute documentary about reclaiming the youth spaces, why it's important. And that's part of our manifesto, our four point manifesto to reclaim these spaces and build new youth centers, which are fit for purpose, you know, mm. not the old dingy spaces that are derelict now. We want new spaces for young people. Yep. And we can do that. And I saw the thing at the beginning of it, the pod, it's, I mean, the, pod, the beginning of the um, episode, it says, the funding was cut and it's like, I think it was like, is it like a billion a or something? Billion, a billion, that's what they say in real terms, probably about 10 billion. I'll be real with you. It's mad. So, and remember, if you're, t- I think the problem with the government was that they allocate the fund, they saw funds that were allocated and they were like, we just want more money over here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where can we take it from that it's not going to affect us? Yes, that's all the... Yeah, take it from them. Yeah. But um, um, what's that, what that's done now is that's accelerated what's happened on the roads because yeah. you've seen it. Yeah. Something, something, something's happened with the change because yeah. we we spoke about this, I think it was last week or the week before and we were like, is it just us or is the world becoming more violent? It's been... but, but I'm not sure if it's because of social media yeah. amplifying it. Yeah. Because remember back in the day, if something happened in SFX mm. or in Kingsdale, yeah. I wouldn't see it in St. Joseph's. Exactly that, no. And we're both, it's both South London. Yeah. You wouldn't see it in Northwest. Yeah, 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 yeah. You wouldn't know. Yeah. I didn't know what was going on in Northwest. Nah, for I, didn't, I didn't have a clue. Yeah. Whereas now... No, no, they can find out what's going on in Scotland. You, you will <laughs> you see a that. video of yeah. all three on yeah. the same day. Yeah. yeah. So now you're like, oh my in, God, in London's getting, yeah, yeah. London's getting fast worse. Enough. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know if it's becoming more violent mm. or... Also, you're seeing more things happening and people allegedly getting away with it yeah. in more volume. That's it. So you think From it's okay. And the higher like, echelons of society, you're that was, seeing that and just getting away with it. And yeah, it's mad, bro. Like 34 billion from the national, from the NHS has been taken away. About 30 billion taken away in education. So you're taking all this money away from young people. So no, sir. So where's it going then? <laughs> in the pockets. So, no, I know, but I'm saying that, like, The bro. Tories, isn't it? They're gone, bro. They, they made their money. And that's, even like the PPE through COVID, like that money just gets extracted. And this is what's routinely happening. Even with some, some organizations or charities that are not really connected to the community. They're doing it because they can make money off yeah. of the plight of, of us. And yeah. that's what we've got to stop. But yeah, big up Adeyemi Michael, man. Like he's an amazing director and what he's done and helped us to create is a really amazing piece. And I, I, I'm personally guessed because I pushed myself because I'm executive producer on it, which is great for me. And that's something I want to do long-term is to create documentaries, more content like this, which gets people talking and gets them thinking about what am I actually doing for my, my community? What am I doing for those around me? What am I actually doing for myself? And I think that's what the film, you know, seeks to do. So, yeah, we're going to be really just pushing that and and keeping you know, mentality at the forefront of people's hearts and minds, man. Big up, man. Big up, yeah, man. Seriously, you, man. man. And also, Respect. just um, obviously, it's your first time on the pod, but you're always welcome back. Thank you, man. Do you know what I'm saying? It, it might be good to come back. I'm not saying every week, but like on a regular basis to yeah, have man. these conversations because it. it <laughs> no, no, no. Because you know, like people might be like, "What's man saying?" But I'm saying in terms of like a friend of the show. Yeah, in terms man. Yeah, of yeah, yeah. Whenever you want to come. Down, love man, love, have a convo love. because it's, it flowed, and also it's nice to see what's happened over there. Because remember, mm. a lot of people listen to this pod. I've even there's a woman who used to work the doors at Luxford Bar when it used to be to do Lux, mm. and she was like, "I watch it with my son mm. because I can't speak to him about mm. certain things because he's becoming a man now." Yeah. So what we do is we listen to your pod. Love that. And we have conversations yeah, someone, about yeah, someone, what is being said on the pod and what mm. we laugh about. It's a, it's a way of us communicating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But also a way of me learning about what's going on and him learning. Powerful, do you know what I'm saying? Powerful, That's sick. So I feel like conversations like this yeah. will help people who have kids yeah. and are not sure what's going on. Because yeah, remember, they, some people are busy, you know. They don't have enough time to... Mm. Know what's going on in the world. Yeah, yeah we yeah. do. Yeah, do yeah. You know what I'm saying, and even some of us, we don't even know everything. Yeah, yeah, exactly that. So these exactly. conversations are very important for parents, yeah. even for kids, for people, even 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19 mm. that are just unsure of. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, man. So that's why I say it's very important. Like, Thank you, man. Appreciate you having me on, man. Appreciate you coming. Yeah, from, man. Thank you, man. Long overdue, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. cool, Respect, man. man. See, Alvarez, he's gone. Wow. Eighty-one million, isn't it? It was game time, man. Put me behind Harland. Nah, man. Let me go shine over there, he's man. He's a baller, though. Nah, he's cold, he's cold, he's cold. And they're going for, what, 26 million they're going for? Oh, so yeah, 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 yeah. From a time ago, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's a good I don't deal. know if he's worth 80, though. In this market, he is. Gallagher's gone as well. Yeah, how, that's... How much did he go for? Bro. I don't know if that's what price. <laughs> 40, you know what's mad about... Two million. I would swear. Yeah. You know what's mad about Gallagher? You know what they done to him? You know what Charles done to him? They put him in... They said you ain't got a number, squad number. Yeah. Because he didn't want to go. Because remember, he's club captain. 
So he's, so he's like, I don't want to. When Atletico came in, he's like, I don't want to go. Mm. He said, All right, bro, I'm not going to lie to you. You ain't got squad number. Can I mm. train with the reserves? So that's what everyone was saying. The treatment is nuts because yeah. this is your captain from last season, and you just banish man. Is, man. is there a reason? Cause they want the P. Yeah, because they the, just signed the next one for is, seven years, bro. He's a high, homegrown player, isn't it? But I think they've yeah. got enough homegrown though. They've yeah, got... but that's why they make it's pure profit. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. So. Oh yeah. That's why. Yeah. That's why Arsenal are doing the same thing. With who? With obviously Smith Smith Rowe. Rowe. It's all pure profit. Yes. And it balances oh. the books. I don't so think because I, of the I, rules of the Premier League, now this doesn't make any sense. This is why there's no players coming through. I don't think you should have sold Smith Rowe though. But you know the problem with teams, yeah, is I'm gonna have to cut this into the podcast after the intro. By the way, um, the problem with teams is that. Once your team gets to a certain level, you need man them that are doing it now. Yeah, I haven't got time for potential. Yep. I haven't got time for some. You play yeah, well, you know, three you know, out of yeah, you know seven is, games. Yeah, you yeah. know why that is. Though. I need that now. Yeah, and Arsenal. How many in that points? Phase, how many points did you lot lose the lead by? I don't know, two. like three. Two points. Just, that's two one. Or three, yeah. That's one game. Yeah. You need a man who can give it to you now, bro. That's it, yeah. But the problem, yeah, but there's games where we lost it. It wasn't to do with the man them. It was Arsenal just game. No, no fair play, yeah, but yeah. I'm just saying at the end of the so day, then, every single game is seen as a final. That's, that's, it. that's, what I'm, that's the pressure that we're on now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I totally that's the understand that, now. but I'm saying yeah. that's why a lot of the homegrown players, you only see teams like Palace, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Brighton, teams like that that like play the youngsters and they don't mind selling them on. Yeah, or, what, yeah. or they have they haven't got the budget to yeah. get the big players. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whereas Arsenal, Chelsea, these teams are in a position now where they're like, we need to get to Europe or we need to... Because Real Madrid next season, anyone playing that team <laughs> is rough, bro. Curtain. Brother. Like, do you know so mad, yeah? Added Mbappe to that, to, to, to that... Do you know that? Like, you didn't even you, need to. Bro, you know you've got an equation that's so mad and you... That's like you now having, I don't know, LV, two, tra- two, by the uh, way. LV trainers. Mm. Endrick too. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's true. Brother. Come on, man. Allow it, man. Blackers are back. But I think what they're doing, though, because they've got the balance of the guys doing it now mm, mm. and the balance of the top youngsters around the world. So yeah. you're learning from the, the best, best in the yeah. game. I just so, hope egos and then you don't just, get... You just take their... Egos. Because there's a lot of egos. Ancelotti's the right man. Yeah. 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 It's not, cool. not Zidane comes back. But also... But, no, but who's got ego there? Think about it. What? No, I'm saying who's no, got ego No, we don't there? know, but it's just like they might be like... This ain't, this ain't the old... This ain't, no, no, like, this know, ain't, this ain't like I'm Ramos, is... Ronaldo, mm. Marcelo, Cruz, Modric. This is too many Camavinga. These are players that they don't play every week anyway. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Um, the rotation's mm. going to be... Because they're playing like... Is it, they said... I don't, know if this, I don't know if it was Real Madrid, but I think Man City could play up to like 90 games. Brother, it's mad. Yeah, next season. Because they're playing Champions League now, isn't it? Yeah, yeah new they, format, isn't it? That's why people, end up couldn't the finals why people couldn't run during the Euros. They were done. <laughs> 75, 80 games under their belt and then they got to play Euros. Yeah. And there's like, always something else. The Euros, there's a, there's a Euro, club the, the club, <laughs> Champions League. There's no, there's a Club World Championship. Yep. There's another thing. Carabao. Nah, something else. <laughs> there's something else. Third Na- round. Nations League. That oh, yeah, came yeah, yeah, out yeah, yeah. of nowhere, bro. Even, you know when they play them games, yeah, and they put on like the B squad and the B squad ain't cutting it. You see Mo Salah warming up. Big man, relax, bro. <laughs> Wasted minutes, man. <laughs> Come on, they don't do nothing anyway. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Oh, the then worst, they got to go the, to the second leg. The worst one is when they get an injury in them games. And you're like, great. I have a one person went on um, friendly. He went to a friendly in Holland, finished his ankle after the season. Mm, yeah, <laughs> also yeah. lost the league. Yeah, I don't yeah, even remember yeah, that year. Yeah. Finished. We're top of the league, you know. <laughs> Bro, we finished fourth. <laughs> like Bentner, Bentner saved our season Lord, that Lord year. Lord Bentner. Bro. I'm Listen, like, brother, yeah. the you see friendly is low. Like, you see what that happens? Is that, like, I went to go watch um, Real Madrid versus um, Liverpool, mm. Champions League final, yeah, yeah. when Ramos body oh, slammed just, Mo Salah. Yeah, brother, the it. game was... But you see the way I sunk in the sofa? I said, the game is done. <laughs> <laughs> like, why, why, why am I still watching this game? Nothing is it's going to happen. happen. Nothing. Nothing. I sat there and the funny thing, it was... The party was at um, Loftus Cheeks' house. Mm. It was his um, cousin that was having a party. Yeah. So everyone was on there, like, bro, a great game. Yeah. I'm uh. sitting there, like, ah, <laughs> this is bad. This, ah, no, no. It was a taste good. I'm like, yeah, man. <laughs> you see, Ram, Ram, Ramos said, they, they had a word in the change room and said, that's the danger, man. Bro, uh, deal with him. Listen. Early as well. He didn't even let the game warm up. Bro, he bro. said, first thing I'm doing. I, I saw Salah doing this. <laughs> I said, oh my God. Nope, he's done. done. And he came off, bro. Oh, pain. Ramos is a G. 
That's why Klopp, you know Klopp um, retired because his heart can't take it, bro. No, no, no. And now you're telling him these charges might come through. That means he won. Mm. Mm, no, I didn't win. No, I know he did win. Come on, man. But you know what I mean, though. Yeah. You know they what they I might mean. come through now. No, I'm not. No, no, oh, I'm saying it's going to come through. Bro, those charges are never coming through. <laughs> you know that, innit? <laughs> There's too much money over there. Those they charges. The, those charges. Into the, bro. Into the FA, not even the Premier League. The FA. <laughs> Them charges are never <laughs> coming through. No, 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 it's mad. Or they'll come through in like 2021, 47. Like in Italy. Remember Italy? When everyone got relegated. Remember that? But Juventus got relegated. I remember that still. That's crazy. That was sick. That could never happen in the Prem, though. Boy. United get relegated or City get relegated. Depends on the bread. City got too much bread over there. No, obviously, I'm just saying, it depends on the bread. Juventus didn't have the bread for it. Mm. Man nah. City's bread is so long that their man have never, I don't think they've ever seen cash. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know when your bread is so long, you, you ain't seen cash. Yeah. You say just fiddling the numbers. Bro, no, I'm just saying this is like, it's just, your card is just, you Best can buy a car and a house on your card. You know them kind of cards? Within 30 mm. minutes. Bro. <laughs> Or you yeah. just tell someone, listen, this is what it is. What what do I need to do? Transfer funds is there. Bring yeah, the car. Bring, it's like, it's bring like the, the house It's key. like Dubai, you know. You know Dubai, you can buy a yard like you're buying a Coke. Yeah, it's mad. It's well, like, my cousin what? lives there. Crazy. He just, just like, just, just like you're going to buy a Coke. Because yeah. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Whenever there's money, what's happened with the world now is convenience has been had added to the equation of money. Mm. So money now gives you... Co- Remember, the normal day-to-day nine-to-five has got convenience. Whether yeah. it's um, Netflix, Spotify, mm. it's convenience. YouTube... Yeah. What I want to watch, I watch it. What I want to listen to, I listen to. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Whereas when you've got money, what differentiates the man with bread from the man without bread? Whatever I want, I can have now. Mm. A house, a car, anything, bro. One second, I just need to question his character. Oh, here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. Here we go. What's going on? <laughs> no, love me, man. Love me, man. No, that's what I asked you a question. So, <laughs> 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 so um, no names, but there's an events brand who decided to host an event in a different city, yeah. yeah? For whatever reason, they've had to move the event. Mm-hmm. But, like, the event is in 10 days. So the punters are like, wait, what do you mean? We've booked hotels, and now you're not talking about we have to catch coach. Cool. So obviously, there's an argument on the timeline that's saying the coaches should be free. As a promoter, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> now, who's, you... no, whose fault is it the event's moved? Whose fault is it? It could be council. We don't know. They're not going to say, but for, for whatever reason it is, the event is not going to be where they advertised it was going to be. How far they can is still it? do the event, but it's somewhere else now. How far is it? Uh, far enough you have to get a coach. <laughs> <laughs> now, a coach might just be for the sheer not amount of people. It might not be how far it is. But they're not booking coach for a 20 minute journey, bro. True. I can check. I can check. But as a promoter, I just want to know. What, like... Yeah, it's rough. <laughs> yeah, it's mad. But to be fair, the less of two evils it is, you have to follow the cost. Mm hmm. For me personally, I'll, just, I'll be vexed. But then what you need to make sure is that everyone that comes to that party is like, we're happy with what happened. Yeah, mm-hmm. you Because if you get... Remember, one... You can have 10... Have you ever like gone on Amazon or Google or something and you see a restaurant or somewhere, mm. might be 10, 12 good reviews. Yeah, you see that the one. one bad review, you're like, yeah. I'm not sure about this product, you know? Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Do you know what I'm saying? It's <laughs> done, isn't it? So I'm yeah. saying, you don't, want a co- you don't want nine coaches of people <clears throat> potentially saying your event's garbage. I look at this here. Yeah, it's mm. mad. So someone tweeted this. My drive to recess Paris with the original location of where I was staying was 13 minutes. Now with the new venue change, it's 40 minutes. It's not that bad. It's not that bad. It's, it's 27 bad. minutes. 27 extra. minutes. If you really want to go to the event, you're going to go to the bro, event. That means, so, you didn't, that means you didn't really want to go to bro, the event. Me and him went Afro Nation. The hotel we got was mm. about was 10 strip. minutes mm. from the strip. Less there. than that. Yeah. What? No, we were on the... No. What do you mean? I think I think to the beach. Sorry, it's beach. less than that, man. Nah, because it was but a long I could, walk. I could see the beach. Nah, yeah, yeah. Bro, <laughs> but when the I went, walk, I could do the, the same. No, but <laughs> the walk that we had to do was a bit long. That That's we it. walked slow though. Okay, fair enough. But, but, let's but say, it, it, it went far though. It went far. Mm. But I was meeting people on the beach. Yeah, where's your hotel? Three hours away. No, 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 man. <laughs> you're out for the day. I don't know if that's convenient. But once you leave, when, when, when you get to the event, you have to stay. <laughs> yeah, no matter what you're that's doing. Three end, hours to the end. Stroke, <laughs> also, you just got to You got to travel at the height of the heat. <laughs> <laughs> that's the man, bro. Nah, I love that. Oh, you see, the next day, the first day I was hot, but I said, and all that walking in the sand? Yeah. By day two, listen, right I was on my day. balcony <laughs> like this, man. <laughs> About 6 p.m. is when I left my hotel. <laughs> my cars were done when I went. You yeah. see sand, yeah? Hey. It's tiring, you know? Sand nah. is different. And the thing is, there's nothing you can wear. Like, nah. Air Force. Nothing. Mm, slides. 
Nah. Mm, like anything he wears, it just it's that's mad. It. That's it. Calf muscles is just <laughs> done, bro. <laughs> I swear to, I swear to you, he took his trainers off and was just yeah. he was just yeah, in the sand barefoot. Like. I, saw, I saw bare man in duos. I said, Mom, this is egregious, nah. bro. <laughs> <But> I said, <laughs> How greedy. <laughs> That's a yuck. Dios, oh, anything for fashion? It's for the girls, though, bro. Nah, man, no, brother, they're fucking up the Dios, bro. Yeah, but it might not be real anyway. Yeah, you don't know, but see me. It's just, it is what it is, man. 